What if the fake news canceled the world's most beloved heroes? When a tragic attack ends the lives of precious innocents, our most celebrated heroes find themselves blamed and canceled by the media that once glorified them. Now in hiding, will they be able to trust each other long enough to prove their innocence? Will they better fight as hard as they can? Because if they don't, an even bigger tragedy is coming. And this time, it will cost millions of lives. Truth, Justice, American Way, the 64-page full-color graphic novel. Get yours today, only on Indiegogo. Truth, Justice, American Way fans, it's time for... Son of Art Contest. Last month, we had an amazing art contest with beautiful entries from people all over Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So we're telling you now, get your entry in. Draw your favorite Truth, Justice, American Way art. Tag me, at Gabe Tave on Instagram. Tune in Thursday, the 21st of April, 4 p.m. Pacific, and we're going to be giving out prizes of first, second, and third place. See you there. Kid seats are just eight bucks. How you guys doing? It is Wednesday, April 6th. Uh, is that right? I hope my mic is on. Dale and I were just talking about that. I have a very special guest who I already spoiled. His name is The Great. Dale, and I'm going to... Oh, I haven't asked him. I've only seen it read and said it with my friends. Kion is how I've always said it. I, I hope I'm getting it right. But uh, here he is, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Dale, how you doing, buddy? How you doing, Gabe? I'm doing so great. So it's, it's Gabe LTM. LTM. No. No, is it okay. Keon? It's Keon. It's okay, like so you know, not yours. It's like if you if you own your own pair of keys. Yeah, you know. yeah. Mine is L. It's very simple. L L I E. L Tai E. But yeah, L Tai. So the A sounds like I. Yeah, I don't don't it. It's a French Arabic. version of an Arabic name. As my dad was going yeah. through customs to get here, he went through France. So I don't know. In, in probably, Arabic, I think it's Atib actually. So I think yeah. there's probably a sound in there somewhere. <laughs> Uh, in a, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you know, in uh, Arabic culture, they say, I think it's Muslim culture. I'm Christian. Yeah. My dad's Muslim. But you uh, know how camels spit on people? Yeah. And I'm not making a joke here. What they say, my dad told me back there, is that the camels spit on non-believers. So that's how <laughs> they know someone is not Muslim. I'm not. My dad told me that. It may or may not be true. But that's what my dad told me. So what, uh, is, they, uh, what is Kiln? What sort of uh, heritage is that? Well, it's an like Irish name. Oh, okay. Because, you know, it used to be Mick Keown, and then they dropped the Mick. I guess that's oh. what they would call them Micks. Okay. So there's oh. still some Mick Keowns out there, but they dropped the uh, Mick. Oh. They're just Keown, okay. so it's Irish. Oh, that makes sense. Like McKeon. It's sort of, it reminds me of that name that I've yeah. the Irish Yeah, exactly. Name. Yeah. All yeah. right. All right. Well, Our yeah, McKeon. let me welcome in. Uh, a lot of people are here. Let me read some names, and then we're going to get to business. Mm. Um, I'm so excited to have you here. I was telling you right before the show, but I want everyone listening to know, um, I was right in that demographic when you guys blew the roof off of the industry with Image in 92. Mm. I was 13. I turned 14 that summer. And I told you right before we went on, I remember walking from the comic book store back to my grandparents' house, visiting them in yeah. the summer in Colorado across these train tracks, not looking if a train was coming, just staring at an issue of <laughs> in my hands like a maniac, yeah. trying to understand how you did this. And uh, and we're going to get a little yeah. bit into that. I hypnotized you. You did. And it's it's wearing off finally. Well, that's so what I want to do. I, I want to hypnotize people with my art. Oh my gosh, it's been you know ninety two. It's mm. been thirty years. Twenty two. Well, I've been doing this since uh, eighty six or seven. Goodness, I was in third grade. Yeah, that's when I started. I was in the trenches. Goodness, oh my gosh. So yeah, because you look pretty youthful, but uh, <laughs> time just flies so fast. He's actually ninety three years old, guys. That's he's right. Very, I am. He's a very old man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm, young, I'm a young vampire, but I'm working. <laughs> Let me uh, say hello to the people in the chat. TVG Animation is here. Passmaster Dan. Oh, it looks like I'm here. 44 Numskull. Zade Comics. Tarks9 is here. RBI Studios. I was never great at baseball. Anthony Potato 125. Gary Tilbrook. Tario Way. Comics Talk with Pops Van Zandt. Great guy. He's got a great channel, guys. Check him out. Um, Timothy Fitzgerald, CJ, Joshua Lamb, Keely Chow. Wow, all kinds of friends here. Admiral Wackass, Mayfield ah. Jukes, CJ, um, uh, let's see, Pale Rider, Son of Liberty Radio. My wife calls him Son of Flipperty Radio when she reads that on there. Angela Curry is always here. Who else yeah. is here? Sketch 51. Can I say Zade Comics? Check out Zade Comics, The Lost Pages, and the Zade Brothers have a great channel too. Mass the Diaz, Diaz Brothers. 
What I said the Zay brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I have Phil Zay. Thank you for the catch there. How embarrassing. <laughs> hey guys, it's a free show, okay? Yeah. Um, mass Phil. debater is here. Very clever yeah. mass debater. Yeah. I will yeah. I will enunciate all that. You're not gonna get yeah, it. you got I gotta work on that too. <laughs> yes, uh Mayfield Jukes, uh, all kinds of uh Mr. Joker, one one two eight, all kinds of great people here. If I missed you, sorry. But uh, okay, so Dale, you are yeah. uh, in Toronto. I'm in sunny San Diego, mm. and uh, you said so. Have you? Right, you're Canadian, obviously. Um, do you love hockey? Do you have a pet beaver? Those are stupid questions. Um, I'm not really asking that. You were talking about getting into the industry in 1986. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, sure. Um, first of all, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Oh, it's my pleasure to have you here, man. Um, the 13 yeah. year old me is going like, gosh, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> Uh, this is so weird for me, but yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I used to be a musician, right? I used to play bass in various bands, right, right, and traveling around. I like to get into adventures, uh, and you know, it was funny because I remember the last band that I was in, it broke up, obviously, and I was about to audition for like a heart cover band. Really, and I, I kind of got excited about that because I like heart, and then I was watching the news and I saw this story. Like it was like a story at 11. And they said, it's about a Canadian comic book company. I'm like, what? My ears kind of perked up. Cause I thought, really? Canada has a comic book company. Right. It was a like free. I was like, oh, really? It just blew my mind. So I remember waiting up and I saw the story and it was like, they were a comic book company, black and white comic books. And uh, they said, if you want all the deets, go down to the silver snail comic book shop and they'll, they'll have all the details of where to send, you know, where to go. So I went down there and I got the address and I took all my portfolio down to this, like, Kind of a, it's like a Victorian, like a tall Victorian house, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I, and it was each it sounds like bed. the beginning of a horror movie. Yeah, something. it really was. It was a really, uh, you know, grassroots, but it was like, how, all old, the, are you, how old are you in 1986? Uh, 86. Um, I was like early twenties. Early. Okay. 20s. I was, okay. Okay. So in 1982, I turned 20. Okay. So I was like 24, 25. Right. Okay. So then you went to the house and they murdered you and you were the guy wearing Dale's skin to this very That's country. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the real this guy was a good uh okay artist. But yeah, yeah, I went in there and uh showed me told him my stuff and they hired pretty well hired me on the spot. Wow. But I didn't expect it because I wasn't, you know, it was like I think it was some fantastic four submissions, but I'd already gotten rejection from Marvel like twice. Did you say the that rejection point. letters? Do you have those? Uh, I might. Oh, I got a stack of them like this. Is that I right? Would, I, I would get two or three a week. I was going crazy. I'll let you tell your story. But I was going crazy in the late 90s, just submitting to Wildstorm, DC, Dark Horse, Marvel. Once a week, I would submit. And was I that would, go pencils ahead. or pencils? It or? was pencils. And I would okay. get a rejection letter from each company once a week. Yeah, you know? I got Yeah, I got a few. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of lucked out, I guess, because I was working so hard just drawing by myself right. before I went professional. So I really liked it. Okay. So instead of going in auditioning for the hardcover band, I went into and I got hired by Air Cell Studios. Okay. Doing, like they were very much inspired by uh, Ninja Turtles. Oh. So the black God. and white books. And right. they were doing all black and white books. And suddenly they're going, here, we, we want to do a book? Like, I've never done a book. Right. And I ended up doing a book. I got a few books and absolutely unqualified for it <laughs> like completely i had no idea what i was doing if you look at that stuff it's really weird do you still have it can you it show looks like it? somebody doing a comic book that was not in any way qualified for it <laughs> can you show us any of it do you have any of it handy or is you can uh, you can actually google uh samurai dale keon samurai okay i'm gonna google that right now keep uh keep talking yeah and me, it's dale. uh i i mean I, there was a lot of passion but not a lot of know-how you know what I mean? Like I put sure. a lot of stuff into it and I love drawing, but it was all like, uh, those, uh, what are those markers? The, the beige markers. Um, uh, oh, what? chat, you know, like uh, for marking or like, they're like a, they're like a, uh, a, a Copic multi-liner, but they're, Oh, it's beige. a Pigma Micron. Thank you. I yeah. use those because they're right. waterproof, right? You can, you can put like watercolor right. over top, but you can't do that with a, uh, with the other multi-liners. So this is Samurai, them. 1986. First yeah, Samurai. Okay, hold on. I found some here. Let me make sure the image search doesn't have any nudity in it. You know, when you search on, <laughs> yeah. Let me search for like John Elway, and then just some nasty stuff pops up for some weird reason. Um, yeah. You can always got to be careful with Google. So, okay. So share my screen. So I found it though. Let's see. Oh, you did. 
There you go. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So this is this you, all this? Yeah. And look at the one where he's holding a sword up to the guy's, uh, the ginger's neck. Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, that's quite a neck on that. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be blurry. I'll blow it up. It'll be a little blurry. Yeah. So this is 22, 23-year-old Dale? Yeah. Yeah. I see some of your sensibilities in it, though. You are getting, like, some of that molding, like, some of that uh, con – you're molding those cheekbones. Yeah, a little bit of it, like the. Yeah, that was uh, that was like Dr. Martin watercolor dyes and. Okay. Crayon. Okay. Oh, I gotta see yep. that. I gotta put that on the screen. We gotta honor that. Uh, for five dollars, oh thank God. you so much, Barrett X. You're always here. Great fan. I back Gem Shock with the gorgeous Dale Kiln cover and Truth Justice American Way early on, and I'm excited. CG has really inspired me. Hey, man, that's awesome. That's an honor to hear. And like I said five minutes ago, Dale inspired me as a 13-year-old. I'm reading Pitt, and uh, I'm glad that I can inspire you, man, and pay that forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, let me see. Um, what else? Is this you too here? Let's see. This looks like Samurai from Air. So this is your stuff, Dale. Uh-oh. I think Dale's having a little bit of a technical problem. Dale, I cannot hear you, and you're moving slow. Maybe uh, maybe jump out and jump back in. Maybe I have, yeah, or maybe I should. Uh, we'll hold on for a second for Dale. But, uh, yeah, I could see some of his sensibility in this, actually, you know. But can't hear you, bud. I don't know if you can hear me. Hold on, guys. You know, I, I did I pay my internet bill this month? I should probably, no, I'm just kidding. I did pay it for sure. <laughs> I'll stop sharing that screen and see if that helps. Okay. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. I still can't hear you. I still can't hear you, Dale. Your video's going good, but I can't hear you now. Maybe uh, maybe just leave and come back. Maybe that's what we need or something. I'll remove these videos from the thing, too. Let's see. Remove from studio. Maybe it's taking up too much memory here. Remove from studio. We're going to be okay. Technical difficulties, kids. <laughs> um, he's still muted. I, I promise we'll get him. Uh, we'll do our best to get him back, though. Oh, where did I go? Maybe Maybe I'm no good. Hey, uh, can you guys hear me again? Give me a one in the chat if you can hear me. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. It says muted on your thing. Okay, I can hear you now. Oh, no, he left. He left. If you can hear me, uh, let me know. Just put a one. In. Okay, you guys can hear me. I'm sorry, guys. You know how the internet can be. The internet traffic gets goofy and then shit like this happens. Stuff like this happens. I'm trying to watch the language. Thank you for all the ones. You guys are really helpful. And uh, we'll, we'll bring Dale back in a second. I think we just had too many windows open. I had two videos loaded in. I was sharing the screen. We got Dale. He's got that Canadian internet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that <laughs> so that was a little bit funny. But, you know, now that you're here, I guess I could share this with you guys. Um, you know, and if Dale can't make it back, then I will definitely share this with y'all. You know, look at what we're working on here, kids. Look how beauteous, beauteous. That's a word. It's a new word in the uh, in, in the English lexicon. Well, oh, here it looks like he's back. Yeah, he's back. I had I had to reboot everything. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get to the werewolf later. We'll, we'll go back to that. Oh, later. All right. We'll get to that later. Because because where were you? We were talking about you were doing samurai for air cell. And samurai, then I, we, we I looked at some you. of the some of the artwork. Uh, what yeah. did I do next? What did I do next? I did a lot of stuff for air cell. I did a lot of uh, I really sort of honed my inking skills. Okay. To the point where. Uh, uh, Joe Rubenstein noticed my work. Whoa. And he goes, oh, yeah. and he, he, he contacted Barry Blair, the guy that, the, who, run, who ran Air Cell. Really? And he, gave, he said, here, can you give Dale Keon my number? Have him call me. Right. So Barry, so he basically sat on it for like a year and a half. Like he didn't want to <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> he didn't want, he didn't want to give it to me. Oh. So finally he went, he gave it to me. So I phoned up Joe and he got, you know, I just sent him the submissions. He brought them around to a lot of editors. And, yeah. uh, and you know, Bobby Chase, the editor of the Hulk, said, yeah, I'll put you on the uh, the active list. 
for like, what was it, like $65 a page or something? I, like, well, I hardly made any money before that. I mean, when you play music, it's nothing. You don't make anything. Right. So but I've it's heard. fun, but it's fun. You know? Yeah. It's a good time. Oh, here's, uh, do you know, we'll get right back to what you said. Do you know David Williams, the great illustrator, uh, worked on Ben 10. He's been in our business for like 30 years, uh, like you. Uh, he's my mm. partner on Truth, Justice, America Way, but he was congratulating me mm. uh, wow. being here. I Dave do, man. Has gone, or Gabe has gone bigly by getting top talent on his channel. Well, there you go. Congrats, Ooh, pal. Who's Howdy, that? Uh, Howdy, King Dale. <laughs> it's you. You're the top talent. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yo, ho, mighty chat. Stay blessed. All right. That's David Williams, illustrator of Truth, Justice, America. Nah, Life. really good stuff. And amazing. I, I do. I do love the coloring. I do love it. You're good. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I, so I right. like. The, I even like the green version on your uh, thumbnail. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. man. You should have a green variant. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. I wanted oh, to... I'm getting I, ahead of myself. Yeah. Well, I don't know how much um, how much coloring will get done today because we're talking, we're having fun. But I yeah. want to go into that image and you can art direct me a little and then I'll mm. color it. I'll record myself coloring it. But you can give me some ideas. A blue rim light, a red light. Like we can fool around with it a little bit yeah. and make a good idea. Right. And you can but change I, the temp temperature later too, right? Yeah. When I really color it, I really want to pay attention and do my best work on it. Right. So, but yeah, a little art direction for you would be really fun because you're a great colorist in your own right. Yeah, I've done a lot. I mean, I've so, done a lot yeah. of coloring, just ma mainly my own stuff. I don't think I've ever colored anybody else's stuff. Yeah. But I always do that because I've had a few color jobs that they, they kind of they couldn't find Waldo. You know, <laughs> it's like I, I like to find Waldo. That's hard hilarious. to find. Yeah. So let me ask you, your buddy at Aircell, the boss man. Yeah, Barry Blair. He sits on Joe Rubenstein for a year. Yeah. So when you find out that he sat on that for a year. You still friends with this guy, or did you want to like? Oh no, no, no I I thought it was weird, but my time with him was almost up anyway, which is probably why he finally gave me the number. Okay, you know, it was kind of the, the company was coming to an end, and he said, "I can't, I can't really hold this anymore." So, oh man, that is that's a little, uh, you know, I don't want to call him a name, but that's ooh, but man, I, he was if someone did that to me. Yeah, he was a seventh degree black belt. So, oh well, <laughs> was he big though? He was, he was big. Damn. He was uh well, what you, well he was like me. I'm six five, three. I could tell. I just looking at you. I'm six four. I can tell you. Yeah. A tall guy just look <laughs> looking right. at you. Okay. Yeah. I got. I got the. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm shaped like a shaved spider monkey. No, oh, that's hilarious. Hey, let me ask you. As a as part of the big guy club, do you also have big feet? Because I want to ask you about shoes real quick. Oh, uh, I got Remember? eleven. It's not oh, huge. okay. I'm a fifteen. What? I was going to ask you. Do you remember before the internet trying to buy shoes? You had to drive around town every store. Yeah, to try and for find me, it was pants. It was always pants. Oh. Or even shirts. Like, I always have to roll up the shirts because everything. I look like Herman Munster. Oh, my gosh. Like, even, you know, I have to get, uh, like, if I get really, like, big pants and they're too big wide. Right. Yeah, it's a real thing, right? Being bigger than your. Right, because everyone your, your height, they assume, is a big, fat lineman. Exactly. So Mr. Too wide for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah Mr. Yeah. Big and Tall. Remember that? Right, Mr. Right, big right. and Tall. Yeah. Guys, this is what us big alpha males go through. You, a lot of you guys don't That's know. Right. You don't know the struggle, <laughs> the pain. <laughs> so yeah, I have uh, all with my. I have seven foot wingspan, so I'm Jeez. with you. I have to buy the super long shirts. Yeah, I got. I got a pretty wide too. Yeah, I'm, I might so, be seven feet. Yeah, I got. No, I, I can't on. be seven feet. Yeah, so uh, That's I'm pretty right, wide. I'm right there with you on the Herman Munster shirts. Coming yeah, halfway up my uh, my wrist. Yeah, but the the hands alone add almost a foot. That's true. Yeah. I, <laughs> right? Look yeah. at the mitts. Like, uh, you got catcher's mitts. I got, yeah. Th this is, t if I could straighten this pinky out, this is like a drawing injury, this pinky. Oh, really? I thought it was football. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. I didn't get hurt playing football for whatever. But a reason. lot of times you'll see guys, they'll have a messed up pinky because of football, right? Yeah. You ever see Brian Baldinger's pinky? No. It literally, it goes like this. It's at a nine. Yeah. Yeah. The same with uh, Denzel Washington. Okay. Yeah. He has that yeah. messed up. Uh huh. Pinky. And oh, uh, Phil has... McGraw. You're a big guy. Did you play any sports? No, I should have played basketball, but I was kind of a geek. Oh, okay. I mean, I was good at law. I was. I remember I was good at long distance running, and I was like happy. Oh, I'm so good at this. But then I realized that all the good athletes they didn't care about long distance running. They just right. wanted to goof off behind everybody. Right. So I thought I was a good long distance runners, but they knew better. This yeah. is the time where you goof off in the back because the teacher can't see you. Yeah, you don't yeah. see the uh, the captain of the track team walking off with the chili. That's right. Oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a real kind of nerd mentality, I guess. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, so uh, rock and roll. You're very. I mean, but I'm not. No, no hockey for me. I never played hockey. No you hockey. Know? People okay. think because I'm Canadian. I, I mean, I I respect hockey, but and I have a lot of people like relatives and stuff who played hockey. 
friends. Right. So I understand hockey, but I never played it. Okay. All you know, right. I remember my, I'm, I'm one of the reasons is well, like back then you get these skates and uh -huh. I think they were like, like white girl skates or something, you know, but the ankle support is so bad that it just, it just turned me off the whole experience. Like oh. we didn't like the skates now have all this support on the ankles. Sure. I didn't have that back when I was a kid. Yeah. The first so time completely I ever, turned me off. Yeah. The first time I ever went ice skating, I didn't get to skate with the rest of my church youth group because they didn't have size 15 skates. Oh my <laughs> God. So then That's I, right. walk, I walked on the ice in my sneakers and then I got kicked <laughs> off by the people who ran the place. So. Just, just, just tied some, some uh, blades on the bottom of your runner. I guess. Yeah. Having yeah. these giant That's, feet, it's just how it's always been. Yeah. So. But you got good support. You're probably easy to, hard to push over. Yes. I'm hard to knock down. That's right. Like the juggernaut, <laughs> Gabe juggernaut. Someone, someone said in here that I'm the mocap for a uh, pit. That's right. Oh, oh yeah. That'd be, uh, yeah. I'll do it. Sure. Yeah. That's right. So I'll have my agent send you over my uh, my list of demands. You know. Yeah, we I mean? wouldn't have to add any height, really. <laughs> no, I, how? Yeah, my goodness, we'll talk about. Wow. Well, yeah. Okay. But uh, okay, so you're at Aircell, and then Rubenstein he wants to see you. Uh, he wants to see you in his office. So how mm. does that go? What does he? How does he? No, does just he... phone calls. He phoned me. Oh, I, was, I actually I sent. I, I might have sent. Actually, sent submissions to him. Oh. And then right. he brought them into the offices. I think he okay. prides himself on finding talent. Okay. I think he likes that. He likes to do that. He's found a few other people. Okay. But yeah, he sort of plucked me out of the independence. And next thing you know, uh, I, you know, it was funny because I got a, I, the only person I got a call from was Bobby Chase. And she offered me uh, She Hulk because John Byrne was leaving at that time. And they needed an artist on She Hulk. Right. And I'm like, that's almost the Hulk, man. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and I remember feeling, I remember feeling so anxious that I wasn't going to get the call, you know? Right. Oh my God! They're, they're gonna they, they're gonna finally realize I suck, and they're not gonna call me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a call, and I got. Uh, she said, "Well, unfortunately, uh, She Hulk is going to somebody else. But uh, would you be interested in doing the Hulk?" And I was like, you know, kind of pretending, I guess. Like, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I was in shock. You're trying to pretend to downplay it. Yeah, I was in shock. You know, I was oh, like, really? Awesome. Like, what luck? Yeah. yeah, I remember, uh, if I could uh, indulge me here with this She-Hulk, mm. hold on, share screen, uh, uh, let's see, let me stop sharing this and then share this other one, share screen, um, did you ever see this, I'm sure you did, this issue of She-Hulk, where yeah. Tom Byrne did as a gag, the She-Hulk is basically naked, the whole issue jumping rope, or at least part of it talking, <laughs> and, and, and a 14 year old me was very appreciative of this and ran out and bought it. Yeah, so, uh, I remember that. This was good for a hearty laugh. But what what's happening? I can't remember what's happening there. Oh, is does that, anyone even remember? It's is just that a, is she skipping rope? Like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's jumping oh. rope. Oh, yeah, that's cool. it's a gorgeous uh unclothed oh. woman skipping rope. And uh yeah, that's awesome. you know, you're 14 getting a hold of this. That's good enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's so all it takes. You almost were on the She-Hulk. That's really cool. Yeah. So the way you said that just now sounded like you were very excited about Hulk. Before you ever worked, at, was he your favorite hero? When you yeah, were he was my favorite oh. character. Okay, uh, it was like a, I had a lot of Hulk books. I had the Sal Buscema Hulks, all from the seventies, uh, and then I would go back and get back issues of the Herb Trimpey Hulk, and uh, and I even got that. Remember the Hulk magazines, the black and white magazines? Right, right. Everything Hulk. I just had. I still have them. I have a box wow. of Hulks, and uh, you know, back then I had. Then I got a subscription. You ever do that? You got to because you know I'd always go to this corner store. Every Wednesday, I learned it was Wednesday, and I'd go and I would uh, I would always wait for the comic books. And the person that owned the store was like, well, okay. Then the comic book box would come in, and I would wait for her to stock the shelves. And finally, <laughs> she just said, dude, why don't you just do it? Because oh, I'm really? always – yeah. So every Wednesday, I would go to the corner store and open the box and stock the shelves. And, and pick, I got first pick, I guess, of oh, all the wow. comic books. And so I, yeah, I was really nerding out even back when I was like 13, 12, 13 years old. That's and then, awesome. I, and then I got a subscription, right? So I got my subscription was incredible Hulk Nova from number one, okay. uh, Herb Trimpey's Godzilla and Sal Buscema's Tarzan. Those are my wow. four subscription books. So every month I would get, you know, you get the comic books delivered right to you. you know? right. So, so I was like, that, that blew my mind. Like, really? Wow. So say those again. That was Hulk. It there was, was Hulk. There was Godzilla. There was Nova and there was Tarzan. Dude, that makes a lot of sense for your sensibility. Yourself. Oh, yeah. And and like the Trimpy 
Godzilla Dynamic. was so good. I think that's probably his best work when he was when Herb Trimpey did Godzilla. Yeah, He's wow. he really loved it. You can tell like each page God. was just a labor of love. That's amazing. There's a super chat here. Let me honor that really quick. Um, All right. Tarks nine. Hail Comics Gate. Your art is amazing, Dale Dale Kion. Thank you. Gave Tarks. awesome work with True Just American Way. Hey, thank you so much, Tarks nine. That's very generous. Yeah. Of you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. And then we had a question directly for you, Mr. Dale. Timothy Fitzgerald asked, how many issues of Hulk did you end up drawing, Dale? Oh, man. I Okay, one. Okay, I did one issue. It was like 189. 190 was Sam Keith. 191 was me. And I, I did almost like if probably maybe 10 issues a year because I had a couple of fill-ins every year, maybe one fill-in. Uh -huh. So it's like three years worth minus maybe four or five issues. Okay. Okay, so somewhere around. I don't 30, really have a number though. I don't know. Around thirty-ish. Yeah, you know, yeah. Something. Okay. Yeah, right. it was like I was supposed to do issue four hundred, which was a big deal, but yeah. and but they pulled it away from me because I had joined Image, and it was like they just uh, severed all ties. Ugh. And here you I, are, thirty years later. I was glad. I was glad. <laughs> I, I honestly yeah. kind of regret. Like I wanted to get started on Pit, so I was thinking I still got it. One more Hulk issue to do. Some kind of a weird thing to complain about, <laughs> right? It's but strange. I wanted to get started because I was talking to Jim Lee, I was talking to Todd McFarlane, and they were getting me all hyped up, you know? Right. Oh yeah. yeah. I could I could only imagine what that must have been like because I do feel like Comics Gate is a spiritual successor to Image. It's like mm. people leaving the it mainstream is. and saying, you know what, we're going to own our own stuff, we're going to have our own vision, yeah, exactly. and uh, and we're not white supremacists, or if we are, we're terrible at it because they shouldn't. Yeah, have we're not. Either. Yeah, we're I'm not a, racist. I'm a Mexican Arab that I don't know how I slipped past you guys. So yeah, I mean we're maybe we're a little Texas, but you know, no one's perfect. Right. <laughs> but uh uh Freedom Cobra, Dale and Aaron LaPresse are my favorite Hulk mm. artist. Oh, very cool. Yeah, Aaron's rocks. Let's see. Tarzan is badass. I'd love to see Dale draw Tarzan or Conan. Where did yeah, Aaron I, go? He Aaron? went somewhere, right? Uh he's I don't know, he's got some something going on for a few days. He'll be back by the end of the week. Dude, I get on. nervous. I get nervous when people I work for go on vacation. <laughs> Cuz remember remember that inker Norman Lee? Uh from Marvel? I don't, I Dude, don't. that that guy inked an issue of Avengers for me. And we're like messaging back and forth. He goes, "Ah, I'm going on vacation now cuz I finished." After like he had a vacation of 10 years. He goes on to the Cayman Islands in the ocean. Oh, he died, dude. He I was lost at sea. Oh my! And I was God. like, it was and my work was like the last thing he inked. Like if you look on his page, he still shows like this Avengers page that I did. I did, that was about five years ago or something. Yeah, right? like seven. It's like seven years ago. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Oh, how sad. I he do just, remember he, that I, now. He was snorkeling with his wife. His wife made it to shore, and he and he and, he, and that and then she looked back and he was gone. Like the, oh. I guess a rip rip tide or something. That's Some so kind of current bad. sucked him back into the ocean to claim his life. Ugh, man, Dude. I don't know. I just hope he. Uh, uh, I, it's hard to think about. It really, but yeah. Really. So I, I think I'm scared when everybody goes on vacation after working with me. Wow. <laughs> I mean, there's there's no pattern or anything, but good. It kind of brings that memory up, and I think, oh, yeah, that's got. Yeah, don't really go cool. snorkeling, Aaron. Were, were you close with Norman, or did you just? No, we just messaged a lot. Okay. Back and forth, you know, I was about as close as you can get to somebody just from messages. Sure, man, how yeah. sad! I had forgotten about that. Very well, sad. Yeah, I'll look at our message uh, page once in a while and go, "Oh my god!" Like the last thing he said. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm all my... finished. Off, off to vacation. Yeah. I don't my... mean to laugh. I shouldn't laugh, but it's so it's. it's no, it's. Who it's thinks that's going to happen? It's to a you? Laugh of nervousness. It's not. You don't. Yeah, think exactly. It's not. I get it. It's nervousness. Yeah. I, I feel horrible. It's about very it. human. No, yeah. I, I still have the texts in my phone. I won't delete them of my cousin, Nina. Mm -hmm. She was a beautiful musician. She did a song for me that I used to always play on YouTube at my show. Mm -hmm. And and uh, two years ago, she got in a car wreck in the middle of the COVID uh, lockdowns. And poor no. girl, she was uh, killed. Oh. Yeah, she was my younger yeah. cousin. Great girl. Oh, I'm sorry and, to hear uh, that. But I save her. I won't delete her text off my phone. Yeah, exactly. Because then they're gone forever. Yeah. it's, it's Might, Maybe on the cloud somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's, but, a, that's uh, really sad. That's yeah. really tragic. Yeah, yeah, I've had I've had I've had people in my family die of car accidents. I had my my uh, like my uh, second cousin died on Christmas. Oh, how sad! Oh, that's Sorry, a tough man. one, man. That that I mean, not only is it tragic, but it ruins Christmas for like a lot of people, right? You know, they just you, bring up the remember. memory. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the the Christmas, the sounds, the the sights, it all bring up that awful memory. Right. And it probably takes a long time. You probably never get over it. No, you probably never. Probably never. I mean, but. she was 16. 
Oh, so, oh, that's even tougher. Anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm like bringing everybody everybody down. <laughs> talking about let's talk about death. It's it's okay though. I mean, it's a, it's a human thing. We can't pretend it isn't mm -hmm. real. Yeah, and uh, you know it matters. You know that's just where your mind mm -hmm. went to Norman Lee, and and mm -hmm. he matters. Yeah, right. I mean? So yeah, maybe I might be a little dark because you said do you remember him, and I was like, no. And then when you explained it to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, I do. Yeah, remember. there's still pages up. You can Google. You'll find out. They called yeah, off and, the search. And you know, all of us, you know, and him, people like him, they deserve to be remembered, not just forgotten. Yeah, like you're it didn't right. Matter or anything like yeah. that. So uh, yeah, he's worked with a lot of people. So yeah, I wanted to. Uh, we'll, we'll get on a happier tone here, kids. But uh, right. hold on. I just wanted to share this real quick. This is my cousin. Just uh, remembering wow. her real quick. Uh, let me let me add this to the stream. Uh, hold on. Add to stream. That's my cousin, Nina. She was only like uh, 34. Right. She could sing like eight octaves. She could play the drums, the guitar, the piano, the accordion. Wow. She was a choir leader here. Uh, she had a choir for like the homeless that she started. Mm -hmm. And another choir she started got on America's Got Talent or whatever. She was one of the most gifted musicians I ever knew. Yeah. And uh, poor thing wrecked her car in May, uh, I guess coming up on two years ago. So mm. that's Nina. And uh, yeah, we love Nina. Poor Nina. Oh, I, oh my goodness. So Sorry. anyway, let, let's uh, let's take a turn back in the comments. <laughs> we don't want to bring people down. Too much. <laughs> know, like, but, but you lot. know, it's it's important to talk about real life and real stuff yeah. like that. You know, and, and everyone, I guarantee you, everyone in the chat, they have something similar or they know of it. You know, oh, yeah. Something. Absolutely. Un untimely, you know. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's cathartic to uh, yeah, you know, it's, do that. It's good. It's good to get these things out in front of mm. you, put them on the table mm. and look at them. Look so at them. Yeah, stand up. Stand ourselves. Look underneath. So, so RIP to Norman and uh, Nina. So where were we? We were uh, uh you got She-Hulk and you no, were, I did I didn't no, no, actually, got uh, I got Hulk. I finally okay. finally got my first script from Peter right. David. Like a plot. Okay. And that was uh I can't remember what I don't remember that issue. Um, all I know is I didn't do the next one because he, she had uh, Bobby had promised that to uh, Sam Keith already. So I probably would have done it. Yeah, I love that Sam Keith serial story Ethan told the other night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I that a I've, true I've, story? I've dude, I've talked to Sam Keith a lot, and he's he is he's kind of a weird guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the he max he, makes a hell of a lot more yeah. sense now. You know what he, I mean? He kind of he kind of <laughs> talks like this. Hey, Dale, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, let me tell you. Let me tell you, Dale. Uh, he told me that he told me this long. Well, it's a good story about how he he uh, directed a movie for Roger Corman. Oh, really? Sam Roger Keith, Corman. yeah. And he said, uh, I don't want to paraphrase, but he was basically the story was that he really didn't think he sh he was a director, but Roger Corman was going, I think you'll do, do great, kid. He's going, I don't know if I want to direct a movie. <laughs> As it turns out, he fucking hated it. And air, all the whole cast hated him. Really? Yeah. It was like a it was like a skiing movie. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe somebody in the chat, but he told me that it was just like one of the worst experiences he ever ever had in his life directing this movie. Cause he's not a director. Right. right I mean, right. he's glad to have the experience, but he's not he's not a director. And it was like nobody would listen to him and nobody respected him and they hated oh. him and it was awful. Ooh. But it, the way he tells it is very funny. Oh, that's that does uh, sound like yeah, I would love him to like tell that. that story. Awful experiences that aren't life threatening can yeah. end up being can end up being funny stories. Yeah, you know what, yeah. what doesn't kill you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we got a direct question for you from the great uh Timothy Fitzgerald. Did you and David yeah. get along well, Dale? You made great Hulk. I have most of David's Hulk run. Did you get along? Yeah, with I mean, we got along fine. You know, gotta remember the first time, poor Dave Peter, because we did the first the time I met. Peter was we did this uh Hulk homecoming tour it was like 89 it's like one of the okay. first things I did and we went to uh Phoenix Las Vegas uh, San Francisco in LA it was like you know it was all like desert kind of uh anyway so we went and uh that and I went to the airport I got to Phoenix me and the guy picked him up at the airport and Peter had like the one of the worst colds I've ever seen like he was just nose was red and he was like Ooh. really bad shape and um He's like, uh, he meet, he meets the two of us and he's like, he wasn't in any kind of social mood, <laughs> but you know, and he's kind of, he's, he's the kind of guy that he's funny, but he doesn't suffer fools lightly. Yeah. And he's pretty smart. You know what I mean? Yeah. I never yeah. met him, but he, yeah. he comes off to me as a little bit of a curmudgeon. Yeah. You know, a little, little bit. Little, little, little Not grumpy. so much. He was little a little grumpy. bit and dude. Okay. 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 So I'm, and we got along. Okay. It wasn't like a lot of laughs, but he does laugh a lot. He is a funny okay. guy. He is, there's a side to him that's very playful and funny. 
I really right. liked, I really liked Peter. Cool. And uh, we hung out and I remember once we were in his hotel room, right? I ha for some reason I brought my light box with me because I was trying to do some work. Uh -huh. And you know those light boxes, they got these cords that are like 20 feet long, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it was yeah. plugged in. I'm sitting there with Peter. I'm like I'm trying, I was trying to act cool, man. I'm like really cool, you know? Yeah, right, <laughs> so, right, right. So I finished what I was doing. I took it up and I picked up my light table, right? And just to be really cool, I was just going to pull it out of the, the socket, right? The, uh, the, the plug. So I go like this. I go, boom. And I watch the plug sail across the room and hit Peter right by the eye. Oh. Like, we're, like at light speed. It was like, <laughs> whap. And he goes, ah, oh. ah. <laughs> I like just some, about blinded. I just about that's blinded. That's like some Jackie David. Chan. That's like some yeah. Jackie Chan shit or something. And I just thought, I'm never going to try to act cool again. <laughs> And that's why I don't know why I thought that would patch. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why I thought that'd be cool, but I thought it'd be hilarious. I was thinking just whipping out super chat. Always have to honor the super chat. Apex Comics for two dollars. It's weird, weird seeing Dale in the daylight. Yeah, I got a window open. Right. It's so the rumors about you being a vampire are not true. And then it looks like we have another one here from the Diaz brothers, not the Zade brothers. How embarrassing! From the great Phil Diaz with I've done it. Check out the lock pages. Hey, guys, great seeing Dale on stream. Everyone check out the biggest collab in comics, CG Vacation, with some amazing work from Dale. Oh, Dale, you're working on that. You'll have to tell me about that. And Comicsgate's best. Awesome. That is awesome. From Zaid Comics, they do quality yeah. books and they deliver. Uh, very great. Uh, and they and a great colorist helped them with some of their color stuff on some of the yeah. books. I can't really remember his name. Oh, it was me. That's right. Me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so check out uh, Zaid Comics. Oh, and for everyone watching right now, sub to this channel because YouTube punishes mm. all YouTubers when we live stream. They take a few viewers away. So I had mm. like 7,020 people like three weeks ago, but I've been mm. live streaming a ton for like two, three weeks, guys. I have yep. 6,940. They've taken like 50 people from me. So I need you all to sub. Please sub right now. Dale, you want them to sub, right? I, I sub. I sub today. Okay. So please sub. And if you're already sub, check if you're sub. Check if you have notifications. Because those sneaky people at Google, they take away subs when you live stream. So please give me my subs back. So Do you know what I also smart. did? Yes, sir. I smashed that like. Yes. So you smashed it like Hulk or like She-Hulk or like both? Well, they, yeah, like a, tag, like a tag team. Now, hold on. Hold on. I need the Dale Kiln prediction. What uh, is Marvel going to do with she hulk and hulk now that we're all like pronouns and we don't know if anyone's a man or a woman how are they going to have a distinction between the two now do you have an opinion on this or is this an idiotic question i'm not have? really up on the newest stuff but all i know is i've seen some pretty butch looking she hulks <laughs> and i understand that there would be some kind of complete fusion i i always thought that she hulk should be sexy right. you know there should be a sex right. and like a like she's attractive like she's hot you know right Right. Was, she's yeah. green and she's hot. Yeah, they're gonna have to change her name to not enough beer in the world hulk now. You know yeah. I mean, so. <laughs> yeah. Coyote Hulk. Coyote <laughs> She Hulk. Yeah. Last call <laughs> Hulk is yeah, that's she, right. You know, you can't you don't have to stop drinking, but you can't drink here. Right. You don't have oh, to go dude, home, but you can't I spent stay here. I spent so many years in bars. Oh. right, right. Well, being a musician, so many, yeah, I like I always more. drunk people, mostly to happy drunks. I find that most people are happy when they're drunk, but once in a while. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that was funny the other night when the guy uh it was something Smoot, Jason Smoot, Smoot. Kept super chats and uh Smoot. I've yeah. never been happier that I gave up alcohol four and a half oh, years man. ago. I oh I yeah, I wish I had. Yeah. I mean I I hardly drink at all. Right. I've been drinking more in the last like half a year than I've I've drank like in the last 20. Oh literally. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But no, you know, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm be I'm getting better. I know how to sort of balance it. Like as long as it's not more than a couple fingers. Right of of alcohol, I think I'm yeah. fine. But I go to Four Fingers and I'm gone. Yeah, well, Just you don't gone. look very heavy. I would guess that you're about yeah two hundred and ten, two hundred. No, no, I'm only like one eighty. Oh my gosh! So I'm a okay. I'm a I'm a I'm a beanpole. I've got you but by hundred pounds. But I make sure I eat a lot, and I have Dude. a very very fast metabolism. It's crazy. Right. Oh. right. Like um, I gotta the, constantly eat. Yeah, uh, I'm jealous of that. I gotta watch what I eat so I don't turn yeah. into like job of the hut. Uh, yeah, Dale, I'm, I'm trying uh, to put on 10 pounds. <laughs> You're talking about uh, Take It to the Limit. That's the film Sam Keith directed for Roger Corman. Okay. There you go. Told you. Have, yep. you, see, have you seen it, Dale? I've Is seen it? stills. I might have saw something. There's probably something on YouTube. All right. Yeah, I think. But yeah, he's he hated that so much. But Roger Corman, I mean, you know, it's pretty cool. 
Right, right, yeah. I don't know what Roger Corman saw. I guess he liked the Max, and he liked. He probably talked to Sam, and he's kind of a eccentric guy, you know. He right. probably said, maybe this guy has something to offer in the regards of uh, directing, but yeah. you can throw it against the wall and it didn't stick, you know. Yeah, I love those kind of guys. Those guys that are way out there and strange. Yeah. And uh, I what? and I think it's better when they don't go mainstream with the big studios. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean yeah. Roger Roger Corman discovered James Cameron, right, and uh, right. a bunch of other guys. So you know, he keeps his eye out for potential big time people. Every every once in a while, I hear your Canadian accent when you say like a boot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you say? I know. I, tr I try to watch that, but do you say sorry? It comes out. Like sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to sorry. Right, right. Sorry. Yeah. That's like a yeah. Long there's holiday. certain things that come out because I grew up in Alberta. I have that sort of an Alberta thing. Sure. How's it going, eh? How's it going, Hoser? Who are the Who are the rednecks of Canada? You know what I mean? Because we have good old boys down here in the south. Yeah, yeah. You, you got, got a lot. Yeah, we got there. we got trailer parks. We got we got uh, white you know white trash. I guess. But you know what it is? A lot of people really make fun of the Newfoundlanders. Okay. You know, from the Newfoundland, you know, they come out here, they go to Alberta, and they work on the oil rigs because okay. there's no work out there. So we get in Alberta, you get a lot of Newfoundlanders, and the culture—it's like a culture, culture difference. You know, really? a lot of times the Newfoundlanders don't get along with the Albertans because Newfoundlanders are very open people. You know, they're okay. always joking, telling stories, and laughing. But most Albertans are Albertans are a little more stoic, I guess. Okay. You know, more sarcastic and stoic. So okay. sometimes there's a culture clash between okay. them. Anyways, yeah, but Newfoundlanders people make fun of. I oh, love yeah. I love people from the Maritimes. They're very open, friendly people. They're really okay. good people. Very, yeah, because what I've yeah. heard from uh, a lot of Europeans is that Americans are just like overly friendly and open yeah. and will talk, say hello to strangers. It, yeah, and I've heard some that. Europeans like, whoa, 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 what are yeah. you doing? Yeah, so, ugly, yeah they, call, they call you <laughs> ugly Americans. Yeah. You know, that thing, that's a real thing. Yeah, I don't like that. I take offense to those. Yeah, movies. I know. Somebody, I, I remember somebody took up. I said, well, I didn't make that up. Yeah. There's a movie, there's books. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, right. I don't think the Americans are ugly. Right. Well, I mean, I, I've, you know, met a few Canadians in my day, and I don't feel like there's much of a difference. We're not much. You're right. Hope. Yeah. Like, you know, if you think about it, we see all the television shows, all the movies. Right. And then we have our own stuff, like our own. Right. Canadian yeah, you have hockey and, night in Canada. We have yeah. Monday night football, right? So, yeah, it's, you know. it's exactly. You have like Although you know, the, our president does do less blackface. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> isn't that ironic? <laughs> like the most liberal guy has the most blackface pictures. This, this is not a political show, but I do love uh, when he was running and they found all of those pictures of him in blackface. A reporter asked him, "How many times did you do that?" And he said, "I don't know." And the guy said, "Could you?" ballpark it <laughs> if you have to ballpark it yeah done if, it way you have it, if you couldn't narrow down your blackface <laughs> yeah. to like yeah. multiples of yeah. 10 i remember problem, yeah. i remember how many times i was in blackface and i was absolutely <laughs> zero absolutely zero. Oh my gosh that's hilarious but but yeah, next time next time you see justin trudeau look at his hands what's up with his hands very feminine Oh, I thought you were going to say got, they had like black no, paint all got, over on the No, he's got city hands from counting money all his life. Oh, it's like, you know, he just, you look at his hands right. and it's like a girl's hands. It's really yeah. weird. Yeah, look at yeah. This. This I got nice, sticky. I got big. This is me straightening it out, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> then you got, see the weightlifting calluses yeah. there? That's all my, yeah. It's all my bench pressing that I do. So. But you can, you can, you can straighten it out physically, right? I can do that. You know, but just on its own, that's yeah. as straight as it can get with the mind yeah. muscle connection. Yeah, that's a tendon and then, issue. And then this one's flying, the top sticks up. <laughs> it shouldn't be like that. But this yeah. is a lifetime of drawing and lifting weights and playing football and all those things. Yeah. So sure. just I know this is your interview, but that's where I lift weights over there. I got a full Olympic set. Wow. It's very dark, but oh, I used to have one of those. Right there. Wow. So, Look at that thing. Yeah. So I'm serious. Uh, I'm very serious about lifting weights. Yeah, I no moved, kidding. I moved yeah, out I gotta to get the garage. It. My wife took my office yeah. in the house because <laughs> COVID. She works yeah. at home permanently, so she took my office. So I just rule the entire garage now. I lift weights yeah. and make all my art in here and everything. That's so. a great man cave. Yeah, it is. I spend a lot <laughs> right? of time out here. <laughs> so yeah. are you into athletics at all? Weightlifting? Anything no. like that? I mean, I've worked no. out, but I haven't worked out in a long time. Okay. But I do right. see result when, once I start. But I'm 59. It's probably I probably hurt myself. 59 when's the birthday uh july I'll be oh i'm july 24th off. what are you oh i'm 23rd oh my gosh my best friend in the world leo's 
Uh, yeah, my best. Well, friend actually, in the world. I'm on the cusp of a cancer, Leo. So yeah, the, right. The but I'm a lot. Of, I'm a lot, of Leo. They always say you're a Leo, and I'm just like, I don't believe in the zodiac, but sure, yeah. I'm a Leo. I guess. Yeah, I know too. Yeah, right. But uh, it's, it's my best friend, we met in fourth grade. He's the 23rd. Yeah. And my wife is the 21st. My cousin's like the 11th. The other cousin, the other friend is the fourth, the 16th. We have so many July birthdays in my circle. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, that's a couple of July. Yeah, actually, all my sister and my father were all were all Julys. Wow, very yeah. cool. Hold on, mm -hmm. we got another super chat coming in. Car uh, Carolus Rex, five dollars. I bought the recent released uh, one through three omnibus collections of Peter David's Hulk Run. Mm -hmm. Dale's art is the most eye popping. Smoot destroyed Dale. <laughs> yeah, Smoot. For those Smoot. of you who don't know. Ethan had a thing on Monday where if uh, people sent a fifty dollars super chat, they would take a shot of alcohol. And I guess one of our viewers is quite wealthy or doesn't care about his credit yeah, card. Yeah, he's got deep pocket smooth. Yeah, and he, he sent about what ten of those or more. Yeah, uh, and, they told uh, me uh, they said well, let's just fake a couple shots. I always <laughs> feel like I feel if somebody's going to pay fifty bucks, I, I'm going to have a real shot. Yeah. I'm not going to fake it. Right, right. That was real money. You know. Yeah, I mean, if if it's a two dollar, yeah, maybe I'll fake it. Right, right. No way, you don't. No, no, no that's not enough. I'm so glad it was all water for me. I'll fake it. I'll fake it twenty. I won't right. fake it fifty. Yeah, let me check on this. I see Steven Seagal giving his best performance behind Gabe, standing silently in a classic Seagal move. I'm not going to apologize. I love Steven Seagal's first five movies. Mm, you're the right. First five. Yeah. You know, Above the Law, Hard to Kill, um, Under Siege, and there's two others. Those are good. Then he went insane once yeah, on Deadly right. Ground came out. He turned crazy. Yeah. But I will I will stand and come on, you gotta give me Van Damme dancing. Ah uh, yeah. Buster. I love yeah. Van Damme. He's got he's, more than five good ones. Yeah, he's so, got uh, he's very graceful. Oh, let's see. Um, so we haven't looked at the uh the werewolf. I feel like we should look at that, but hold on, I'm checking. Uh I'm still here. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Oh, we got another Leo. Oh, Dan Lawless is a Leo. Mm. Um, let's see. Dan is fantastic, too. He does a great Conan. Dan and I, uh, I, I gave Dan this great idea for a, he should do a Conan book because he's like an amazing Conan artist. Yeah. And the name I came up, came up with is just Conan Backwards. Is that his Conan? Uh, that's his there, yeah. So wow, is it full painted? Uh, yeah, I think that was pencil and then digitally painted. But if you just spell Conan Backwards, it's Nanok. So I think Dan and I eventually need to do a book together called Nanok the Mighty on Indiegogo. Do it. So, I love it. I love it. Yeah, because yeah, Comics Gate needs its, its own yeah, content. But Nanok, I think Nanok is a good name. And that is actually backwards. Nanok of the North. Nanok the Mighty, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, for every uh, monster he slays, he has to bet a woman or something. You know, it's just oh, ultra <laughs> testosterone, you know? As it, yeah, as it should be. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, we all are. Remember, remember that scene in... Uh, Sin City, where he goes, they all and they all are nothing days. Right. You know? Back in the days, they'd be throwing this guy chicks. Oh, oh I love that movie. His, you know, I love Sin City. What, a, what an insanely good movie. Mm. Let me. Okay, so uh, we've been going for almost an hour, so I think we should uh, we should right. show the cover here. Yeah, you, enough yeah. enough information. Okay. People people know too much about me already. <laughs> we need your your mother's maiden name, the street you grew up on, and uh, that's. Do you ever see those on Facebook? They're like. What yeah. was your puppy's name, the street you grew yeah. up on, and your mother? That's your rock and roll name. It's like, no, idiot. Those are your credit card security questions. Yeah, like, I always put I always put fake information on Facebook. Like people think I'm from Tennessee. <laughs> you know, I'm a, a ninety, a, you know, eighty years old. Oh, that's but crazy. I don't know if that works or not. But I do get some. I get catfished once in a while. You ever get that? Uh, I do. Where it's I that not, thing, I, that shot of an unbelievably attractive woman, and then you go to her profile, and it's like she's got like it's a brand new profile. She's got like one or two people you know oh they'll, they'll suddenly follow you on instagram yeah yeah and i, I was talking to one for a while and i i, oh, I thought hilarious. there's no way this smells real that's hilarious and she was oh well i'm a married man so any woman that uh, is approaching me online sorry that's gonna be a that's that's a no-go for me you know yeah. negative ghost rider the pattern is full come on some harmless flirting <laughs> my wife watches this show dale oh, please, oh my god don't send it be careful <laughs> she's in the other room Hi, hey the phone call is coming from inside the house. So, there we go. So, so I was thinking on this cover here that you masterfully illustrated. Thank and you I took much. a screenshot. I took a screenshot of this yeah. um, and sent it to my brother and my best buddies. 
We yeah, all collected look. Image Comics, and I've looked. I said, look at this. I put Why? my name under Dale Kiln's name. Well, I know. Like, uh, when you sign your color, you know you're proud of it if you sign it. I know I've had uh, co people color my work. And then if they don't sign it, I always think they're not really proud of it. Oh. You know? Funny. No, because a lot of times I would send work in that was uh, like the colorist had literally an afternoon to turn it around. Uh-huh. You know? I would drop box him. And he'd hit me. But it was Jason Keith, and he always did a good job. Right. Yeah, he's a good colorist. He always, even if he's in a hurry, he did a really good job. Hey, look at that. I'm just gonna dummy in something oh, really, really. Did quick. you Did you make selections already? Uh, I made a selection based off of your pencils in a channel. That's oh, it's it, yeah, kind of like it. Um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, when you modify a selection, you it's contract an inter, it's or an expand. Selection. It's an intersect selection. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But uh, well, I just want to. That's pretty fast what you're doing right there. Yeah, well, this is just a dummy in so we get an idea. Because I'm going to yeah. really color this offline and record yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Make a beautiful video. But I wanted yeah, to get your opinion on some color choices here. Yeah, do some highlights on those on those veins. And that's weird right. because a vein really shouldn't exist on a furry animal. Right, right. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, all, the fur is really long on his back and on the back of his arms, but it gets really short on his chest and the front of right. his arms. That's what I was going for. And I, whenever I draw a creature, I always have to make him vascular. Right. Yeah, yeah oh, I, no, see, vein, I see what you're doing. The vein for so so that's a color scheme there. But yeah. what I was wondering, like, I mean, we could go all kinds yeah, of ways with this. Yeah, because uh, there's, you can a, make there's it. a version where it's cool then warm. But I think warm then cool is better. Yeah, I like. I, I mean, the warm orangey colors really pop the blue and vice versa. I mean, it's a. Right. I mean, I th I don't know what movie hasn't used that color scheme. You know, right? It just works. I mean, they're complementary colors, so it works. Yeah, but yeah, that kind of a brown like. What color is Jason's werewolf? I guess, or sorry, Aaron's werewolf. It um, is just well, the I typical made, brown. One in the book, I made like a brown, like a, a grayish purple brown, like a desaturated yeah. brown. And yeah. another one I made a really hot red, uh, reddish brown of, mm. of a couple of the two. So they can, I, okay. he leaves it up to me. He doesn't tell me. So uh, we were going to go classic brown. Unless you wanted to yeah. go like a blue gray, we could do that. You know what I mean? So we could. No, we I think that's, go. I think that works. Yeah. I mean, we could just, you know, just for just a second, for the sake of, for the sake of curiosity, take a look at him as a blue guy. But then we'd have to adjust these colors on top. I know you got yeah, but I mean, but, there's uh, different different ways. I mean, the thing you can't adjust it afterward, which is that's one oh, of the wonderful things in Photoshop. Right. You know, when you're doing like real painting, you got to make the decisions and stick with them. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Red. look at that's a black wolf. Yeah. So we could do that, and uh, I also had another idea about like a orangey moon. Right, mm. and then and then this light over oh. here. I'll just make a sloppy selection. This light over here would end up being orangey, mm. if we, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. So I do. So, but I I think we need the warmer light on the bigger part. I do. Yeah, I I agree. Okay. I mean, I don't know what Aaron. If Aaron puts a cover, he'd probably like tuck it behind the head of the werewolf. Yeah, it's gonna end. But up did you there. catch my? Uh, did you catch my? Uh, my radial zoom blur on the trees. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, 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 that you know, I was going for. You remember that scene in Jaws where like Brody's sitting on the beach, right. and everything's kind of coming in and going away at the same time. Right, right. I kind of right. wanted somebody to turn around and see him sitting there on his haunches, ready to attack, and it's like, Bruh. yeah. I mean, I my favorite thing about artists are faces. When people draw the Adam oh, thank Hughes you. female oh. face, when you draw a monster face like this, yeah. I can't take it. I can't get it's so good. The level of dopamine I get from amazing faces, whether they're yeah. ugly monsters or gorgeous women or handsome men, uh, it's just ridiculous. It, to me, it's the most important part of a drawing is the face. You, you got to have like, that. Uh, kind of like Rembrandt. You know how Rembrandt would make the face have a little light and tight? And then yeah. the body would be a little smoky and ethereal kind of going away sometimes. In That's a, Yeah, Frank Frazetta, too. He All the stuff right. on the sides was kind of kind of dusty, kind of messy. Right. But everything where, where, you, where the, the money shot was always tight. Right. So uh, I definitely uh, love a face, and uh, that's super important to me in the image. So, um, but I and so I, I guess if we're gonna go with that color scheme, then who's calling me? That's a spam call. Not gonna answer it. But uh, I don't know if you can hear my phone ringing. But uh, it's a spam call. Barely. But I think, and then the background. I was gonna knock the background out. I'll show you this real quick. And again, none of this is how I would actually do it. This is all very like crude. Yeah, like but, for. Uh, uh, 
teaching lessons, our right, teaching right. purposes, really. Yeah, so I'll just select this stuff back here just to show you. Okay. What I was going to do on that moon, uh, just pretend the moon's going to be blue. We'll make that blue in a second here. Blue um, moon. Sorry. Right. So I was going <laughs> to knock out, knock out some of the back, maybe not that much. And then, of course, the moon needed to be blue to match that. I see. Uh, That's kind of yeah. interesting, dude. So, wow. I mean, what, what do you think of something like that where we're, and, and, you know, maybe we would have a little bit of this, a little bit of this, uh, a little yeah, bit well, of the warm, not too much. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. In the direction, a little, because we right. don't want to kill your pencils. We have to show them. We have to honor what you did. It's not well, about me. This thing, you know what I mean? Oh, see, so, oh yeah, knocked it back, and yeah, that's even better when it's got a little bit, right, right, just a little so. bit knocked back, like almost like there's a haze in the air, right? You know, because yeah, yeah, I already, yeah, yeah. I already established the kind of a haze like going down, like right. there's a like a layer of fog. Right. I got that. I got that from Sylvester. Yeah. So, but I was wondering, uh, do you do you like this color scheme? It's a very normal one, but I do think it's dynamic. I think that's the best right there. Okay. That's beautiful. So we're going. Already, it already looks beautiful. Okay, orange and blue. Let yeah. me let me check on the chat because we always got to see what they're saying. So I have to hide yeah. the screen so I can bring the chat over here. Hold on. I know they want it pink. Let's see. <laughs> oh goodness, that was my breakfast. <laughs> I don't want to give my breakfast. Ew, yeah. I had a delicious breakfast. I had a big French croissant from a French bakery. Oh, nice. With sausage and egg, big and a big cup of coffee. Yeah, I had a leftover burger. There you go. Um, you know, what, you know how horrible it is. You know how horrible it is when you have you cut a burger in half, like, and then you you microwave everything, like the bun, the pickle, the lettuce. Oh, oh the lettuce is. But I scoffed it down anyway. Here's what you got to yeah. do next time. Take the patty out and microwave that and then put it back in with the cold vegetables. Mm, I ain't, got, ain't got time for that shit. Okay. Do you remember the horrible McDLT in the 80s? That. The well, they, they thought they tried to solve that problem. Right. For those of you too to know, McDonald's had a two-compartment two sandwich. Yeah. George Costanza did the commercial. You would buy the McDLT, and it, it were two boxes connected. And when you would open it, you would take the hot stuff and put it with the cold stuff, and then eat your hamburger. Yeah, but the it cold was, stuff uh, would immediately heat up, right? As soon so, as it touched the hot stuff. I guess it was a marginally better. <laughs> right. It's right. more like a more like more. But I I used to really like the McRibs for some reason. Yeah, like they're kind of disgusting, but right. they're kind of good. They're fascinating in their disgustingness. <laughs> yeah, even their even their ice cream is horrible, but somehow it's good. <laughs> I don't even think it's ice cream. I think it's like make plastic or something. It's like, I don't know, like flavored gelatin and yeah. sawdust or something. I don't well, know. That, remember, remember what happened in the McDonald's movie where the guy came up with the powdered milkshake? What a great right. movie. The founder. Yes, it what was really good. Movie. I love that. Dude. Yeah. Um, P ear. I don't know if it's pear or P ear. The werewolf reminds me of a brown version of the Underworld movie series with Kate Beckinsale, like in werewolves. The mm. writer of the Underworld, the creator of that, Kevin Grievix, he created. Uh, he's the writer of the Bass Reeves comic I'm doing with David Williams. Really, that guy is a powerhouse talent. He's a. Does great that have Does that have a werewolf in it? No, it doesn't. You know, Bass Reeves is a real person, right? He was a real yeah. historical figure in the pioneer yeah. days. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so no, this is it's a very realistic take on Bass Reeves. Okay, that's no a really werewolf. fun comic. Let me show you some of that really quick, because you were unfamiliar with David Williams. And uh, you need to see yeah. David Williams really quick, and then we can get back. Yeah, to I do. But, uh, since That's we good. brought that up, let me let me show it really quick. And thank you so much for joining me, man. Oh, this, uh, this really is fun. really fun. I'm really enjoying. Yeah, this, this is. Uh, I, I I never do shows in the daytime. It's weird, right? I think so I did this, Andy's show. But. Is this early for you? This is uh, usually I go. I'm up. Okay, usually I get up anywhere from eight o'clock to like eleven p.m. And okay. then I'll I'll work all night, and I usually go to sleep about two p.m. Okay, but I did. I got up at noon, so I'm still good. I mean, I got up at midnight. <laughs> I got okay. up at midnight. Wow, look at that. Yeah, this is David Williams. He got hired by DC Comics when he was 17 years old. I remember you talking about this. Yeah. yeah, and he's like 55 now, so he's been in the business forever. The reason most fans don't know him as much as they should because he's freaking amazing. He oh. spent most of his career in television, consumer products, oh, all yeah. that stuff. So he, how, he how old is he now? Is it how old is he in his 20s? He's, he's like 55 now or something like oh, that. Okay, so you know? he started young, yeah. Yeah, he was there with you at the image rooms. He was at Rob's shop. Yeah. He, uh, Todd McFarlane offered him spawn before Greg Capullo got it. Really? Yes. And then he went over and he did Supreme for Rob Liefeld instead, I guess. So he was yeah, there with he, you right at that time. He is really dynamic. 
Yeah. And uh, holy cow. I don't know how much of our stuff you've seen for Truth, Justice, American Way, but while mm -hmm. I've got you and this audience, let me show yeah, you. It, that's and also it, very dynamic. Yeah. This is this is our love letter to uh, to comics here. We, uh, you know, we it's uh, what if the fake news canceled the world's most beloved heroes? So, uh, yeah. yeah, we have our like a super group, like your Avengers, your Justice League yeah. and all that. Truth, I, I like, Justice, I love that American angle. Way. That's yeah, I are. like how the um, I love I love it when you have those uh, scale shots, you know, right. you can do the, the distance. Right. Yeah. And look at okay, so what I did with the coloring here, you could see there's the street in the far background with the mm -hmm. foggy effect. And then you see there's the higher like Bridge Street right behind Justice there as he points his pistol up at unknown danger. That's right. Like, you knocked out all the blacks on the building. Right. Yeah. yeah, but I kept the colors inside the building light enough so you could still see Gary Martin's amazing inks. Yeah, so uh, you don't want, and so when I work on yours, I'm not going to destroy any of your line work. That's always something I keep in mind. Since I illustrate myself, yeah. I know how I would want to be colored. Gary Martin told me uh, last night we have a show called Players Club on Tuesdays. Gary was on with me for a few hours, yeah. and he says the amount of times he's been colored and didn't hate it is like a rarity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where the colorist mm -hmm. just destroyed what he was trying to do. Exactly. And uh, yeah, that, to me, that's one of the most important parts of coloring is to make sure my coloring agrees with the pencil and the inker, not, oh, Gabe's doing his own thing now. You know, yeah, I mean? that's a, that's near perfect cleavage there, buddy. Oh, boobs are back now that I'm not working. <laughs> boobs are back. Dude, when I was at DC the last year, they were getting so woke that any yeah. breath, anything that straight men liked was evil, right? Because that's how woke yeah. is. Oh, yeah. And whenever I would see boobs in a comic, I would go out of my way to render them as 3D as possible because I knew I would get an email the next day telling me to tone it back. I would just mm. do it to make myself laugh. I would yeah. big, deep shadow, put a highlight on them, put a rim light underneath, and I'd get an email. Um, In panel <laughs> three, the breasts are a little too accentuated. Can you please reduce the render? Yeah. They said, please, less focus on the boobs. It's like uh, in, in panel two, we forgot who the fuck our customers are, and they love awesome, brave men and gorgeous women. So please yeah. take that away because our customers love it. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's like, no, I just oh. think that, I mean, if I draw, wherever, whenever I draw what drew women, I said some of them are going to be small breasted. Sure. But not, not all of them because that's not realistic. That's not uh, representing reality. Right. Because some girls have big boobs. It happened, you know. It oh, happened. look at that face! That's great. Isn't he just <laughs> handsome? There, he's like Fred yeah. McMurray to me, or yeah. something, you know. Yeah, uh, but I he's American you. way. I'll tell you real quick, and then we'll get back to Dale because this is the Dale show. Yeah, but uh, we have Joseph Ellis. What a great name! He's the American way. Comes mm -hmm. from a long line of like Pennsylvania, Ohio steel workers. His dad, mm -hmm. his grandpa, they all were steel workers. Those real good, like uh, you know, salt of the yeah. kind of American. That's right. Yeah, he fell into a vat of uh, supercharged American steel. I don't know. That's comic book science. Don't ask Amer me. He has had to be American it's steel. Supercharged steel. And it turned him from head to toe into solid steel. And a lot of people would take that as a curse. But he took it as a badge of honor. And he's devoted his life to defending the land and the people he loves. We have justice. We don't know who he is, where yeah. he comes from. CIA, Secret Service, Mossad, FBI. We don't know. He's a zealot for justice. He's our street level Charles Bronson, Midnighter, Batman, Punisher. He's a super badass, this guy. And yep. then we have Amara Rudolph. She's a it's kind of a, it reminds me of kind of like Judge Dredd. Yeah, you know? that's a great aesthetic for him. Yeah. Yeah. But he's uh and it's hilarious. David has in a different drawing etched on his Glock on his pistol, it says yeah. easy way. And then on the nightstick it says hard <laughs> way. Yeah. You know, he'll ask yeah. a villain, you want it the easy way or the hard way? Hard way. <laughs> and uh, and then we have Amara Rudolph, yeah. our gorgeous former Olympian who realized she had superhuman, uh, uh, you know, athletic and dex uh, dexterity. So mm. she dropped out of that, but she also has this ancient power, those gold marks on her. She can yeah. force the truth out of anyone. And it's terrifying when she does it. So together, uh, you know, they are truth, justice, American way. And we, uh, we are so excited to bring this to you. Well, it's terrifying for people who are lying. Right. Right. So she'll find out what you're up to Dale. Uh -huh. She'll know where you really were hey, last night. I'm, a, I'm an open book. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, uh, but then again, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, Come yeah. to think of it. <laughs> so Maybe please not. check that out. We are uh three dollars away from uh fifty one thousand, and I think we're one backer away from eight hundred. And we yeah. already unlocked the trading cards, we've got some stickers coming up next. So uh please back that. Dale, yeah, would, yeah. You, would you recommend people back that book? I remember I would highly highly 100 percent recommend it. Also go out and back Gemshock. Yes, 
because it's uh, it's like five days left for the first really closeout, and then before the extra innings, I guess. Let me bring that up. Really. All right. While we're shilling, let's shill, right, that's baby? Right, let's do it. Let's milk it for all it's worth. Yeah, that's what I that, tell my wife. That, I said. that was a, a top cow slogan, moo. Oh, moo, that's right. Milk it for all it's worth. Is it that moo. what that meant? It was not a good acronym, but. Okay. It, but they used to milk it. They used to milk a lot of stuff. Right. So here's Gem Shock Woo. with the gorgeous Dale cover here. Look at that. Thank you. I love it. I got to ask about that outfit she wears, though. Well, it's not oh. an outfit. It's more like it comes out of her body. Okay. She because, doesn't really, she can kind of control it, I guess, with her, with her mind. So she could put on more clothes. Right. And, right. and her, her, I mean, her father is like, you're not leaving the house like that, young lady. I just She's hope like, the back strap of her, her, her G-string is not made of gems. Gems. Well, yeah. I hope the, I hope the part in, yeah. in the crack, I hope that's cloth. Well, <laughs> apparently, I've talked to girls, like strippers and stuff, when they wear the, the thongs. And they, eventually, they start to dig in your crack. Oh, like it hurts after a while. It's you just, like you just made me clench. No, it does. Apparently, it's like a th if you have a thong on for too long, mm. it'll start to uh, dig in. Uh, right, girls? Right, right. I've never, I've never had a thong. I'm on. glad as men, you and I will never. Yeah, yeah you got to know they're suffering. Right. Like so. high heels and thongs. Oof. Oh, sorry. Here's an old comment that made me laugh. Dale described the saddest hamburger I've ever heard of. <laughs> Your breakfast hey, when you hey, might go with the lettuce and everything. <laughs> I just wanted to get something in me. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious! That's what she it was, said. It was yes, <laughs> and it was double. It was a double burger. So. Right. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. It's too uh, many jokes. Oh, Jump Shark reminds you early image. Great one. Thank yeah. You. Well, there you go. That's oh, the, Mike uh, TV dub. I bought Gabe's book just because he gave Truth a boob window costume. That was David Williams' master stroke of design. But I'll take the compliment anyway. David yeah, boob is a genius designer. So I was thinking of putting a, ba a boob window, but. I didn't want it to look like a bikini because you notice right. it, the straps really don't connect. Uh, it's to a comic book. Right? Yeah. It's it like, doesn't matter. Yeah. I said uh, American Way fell into a vat of supercharged American stuff. Yeah. I don't even know what that means, guys. It's a, Don't ask me to explain <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Listen, <clears throat> if a human being fell into a vat of steel, yeah. there'd be nothing left in real life. Yeah. That's why It'd these are like, comics because yeah. they're fun. Yeah. And they're it's, the end, it's the end of Terminator 2. You're oh, gone. David is correcting me. He's 52. I said 55. Oh, remember, I was saying he got in at, at DC at 17. He's 52. Yeah, that's good. 52 is still pretty young. I'd give my left testicle to be 52 again. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I remember when I turned 50, I was like, oh, man, I'm old. That was like yeah. nine, almost 10 years ago. I'm not there yet. I'm only uh, 43. I'm only yeah, 43. well, that's a good age because you're not yeah. a, you're not young and you're not an idiot. Yeah, yeah. You know, anymore. You've learned some stuff. Right. You know? I was, yeah, I had some very well, I don't, I'm not saying you were, but <laughs> no, I hey, I'll, I'll copy. I had some yeah. very stupid <laughs> ideas into my 30s. And yeah. I think yeah. when I started focusing on self-improvement and like mental, spiritual, really focusing, yeah. I was like 33 or 34 when I got serious about that. Yeah. So uh a lot yeah, of dumb, same a lot here. Of dumb shit yeah. going on before that. <laughs> yeah. Probably same here for me. Yeah. Oh, oh, here's a great one for you. Hmm. I can hear the money like a slot machine. Hit omnibus, right? Yeah, I should do that. Yeah, you know, it, it, it does take some work on my end, so I tend to drag my feet. That's all right. You know, I heard John Byrne once say that uh, you're growing roses, it mm. takes a while to make something beautiful. Ah, and uh, I have found when I worked at DC as a colorist, I would do three books a month, I would do sometimes four because mm. I was just you know making money and trying to do as good as I could under those deadlines. But yeah. I see now that I'm completely independent. I don't color four pages a day anymore. I don't do stuff like that because I don't have to. And I, yeah. do a, I do a nicer job because I have the time to work until I'm tired of it. And then it's like, I'm going to take the night off and take my wife somewhere. You know what I mean? And well, it's yeah, a same here, man. way to live. Yeah. Before I, st I started at Comic Skate, I did like probably three Avengers issues, but they were all rush jobs. Right. And it just, it just, I was getting like tired of doing these rush jobs. You know, I wanted to like right. flex, flex my muscle. So, but I haven't really done that much. And I've been here. It's actually coming. It's actually my uh, one year anniversary being with Comicsgate. Really? Yeah. It was April wow. of last year that I saw Ethan on the, the Kurt Metzger uh, podcast. Mm. And I immediately, cause I think I'd already messaged like Ethan, like a long time ago. So he was still in my message list. And then I messaged him and I was saying, man, that was a great interview. Right. And then he got back to me and said, hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. We went back and forth. And he said, so you want to 
Do you want to do this? <laughs> do you want to do this? And I, I like how he <laughs> fantasizes about being this mob boss and all that. That's right. That cracks me up because he's, you know, yeah. he's New Jersey. Yeah, so we got to have more, we got to have more sit downs. Right. There's too much. <laughs> there's too much inner fighting in CG. You got to start oh. have starting some some sit downs with Ethan before right. oh before God. anybody tweets anything. Right. No. You know, he, people are so fast to tweet horseshit. I think he's a good spokesman for the whole thing because he's charismatic. Yeah. And one thing about him. He can be attacked and insulted, and for whatever reason, the way he was raised or something, he has great stoicism. Yeah, he doesn't absolutely. lose his shit. You know what? But I mean? I've noticed that like there's other people. I'm not talking about Ethan, but there's yeah. other people in Comicsgate who got into trouble because they're they got butt hurt, right? right and right, then right. they instantly tweet like ah, blah blah blah, and then it it snowballs from there right. when they should. You know, when you you don't have to tweet like you could just say okay, um, I know I because you're basically acting out emotionally. Mm -hmm. which is never and twitter is so easily to actually act out emotionally oh, all you got to yeah. do is write it have it written and go okay i'm gonna wait for tomorrow i'll revisit this tomorrow i know it's hard to do and so you come back the next day and you look at should i tweet this and you go ah, i'll do it tomorrow and then you keep doing that and you never tweet it Why that's what work? you do that's what you do you just never tweet anything that is a, is an emotional act out Absolutely. it's always a bad news it never that's, ends good. That's a really, really brilliant. Advice. But that comes from being 59 years old and not having Twitter. And as so many young people, they just every little thought. Yeah. And it, there'd be less infighting if people would just kind of think about what they're going to tweet first and, and, and figure out what the ramifications of that are going to be. Right. And you know, you it seems like there's a lot of knee jerk reaction. Huh? You said earlier about sit downs and you were half joking, but yeah, think about Twitter. I, you wouldn't say this stuff or act this way in person. You'd be much no, more kind and calm. Absolutely and, not. You know, yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. absolutely. There's this uh this 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 layer of protection, you know. Right. Because Twitter, you're not talking to a person, you're talking to pixels, yeah. you know. So mm -hmm. you're very you you act inhumane because it's inhuman. It's not a human, yeah. it's your phone, basically. Yeah, like why, like. If there's people who don't like my artwork, they're certainly not going to find me at a convention and tell me that, you know, <laughs> if anything, they're going to, you know, I've only heard people who like my artwork, right. Nobody, you know, only a crazy person would go out of the way to, but Twitter's like that. They go know? find you in, uh, hold on, they go up to you in Artist Alley. They wait after like three people getting autographs to say, yeah. um, Dale, your cover to Hulk, yeah. you know, 300, whatever. I didn't like it. I thought his face looked funny. Okay. That's all I wanted to let you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have used some of that uh, helpful. It's criticism. psychotic behavior, though. Yeah, it uh, is. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Eric the Guapo, five dollars. Oh, he says, "Hold on." He says, "Dale." Dale. <sighs> I had to put a little acting on it. That's acting, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. You're all welcome. That's so. like that that Batman sh scene where the Joker's sitting by the <laughs> bed. He goes, "Hi." <laughs> <laughs> So uh, did you see and do you like the new Batman? I didn't see it. No, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen Dune either. Oh, I mean, I have it DVR'd. I'm going to watch Dune one of these days. Okay. I, yeah. I'll say this. I won't say anything about the movies. Dune, those are some of my favorite books in the world. Mm. Oh, my gosh. They're so, have you read them? No, I've never read the Dune books. Oh, they're, they're insanely good. I mean, there's a reason they've been bestsellers for 50 yeah. years or however long it's been now. Right. There's a reason if you play Warhammer, Star Wars, or Game mm -hmm. of Thrones... You're like, oh, it all borrowed from Dune. Like it all stole ideas from Dune, like literal yeah. names of things. I've heard that. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So Dune is Dune is the creme de la creme. So mm. do you speak French as a Canadian? No, I know like a couple of swear words. That's it. <laughs> Meld, right? I know when I, I here's what I did. When I we played Quebec once. Okay. A couple of times. We played this place called Roxanne's. It used to call used to be called the Pepillon. Okay, the you butterfly. Know? Yeah, the Pepillon. And uh and I remember before we went to Quebec, this guy said to me, this other musician said to me, you know, it's like three girls to every guy there, you know. Ooh. I'm going, get out of here. It's a so target. Show, dude, dude, the Saturday night, I look out and there's all these like they looked like underage and they're all decked out in like Judas Priest leather and studs. And there was good, they were just girls upstairs. So I had to ask my friend some French words because I they didn't speak any English. Oh. And I and he and I said this would have been a really good opportunity for him to fuck with me because he could tell me like, all these wrong words. <laughs> you look kind of fat there, lady. Oh, that's hilarious. No, but I ended up with two girls in my bed though. Well, there so. you go. Mission accomplished. How yeah. how old is this Dale? I don't know how old she was. She looked pretty young. No, I mean but, how uh, old oh, was oh. Dale? How old was Dale when this happened? I was uh okay. Like this this was yesterday. Was, I was like 20, maybe 22. 
Okay, 22. Something like that, 23. 22, playing the dive bars yeah. and uh, meeting yeah. the groupies. Living yeah. the dream. Yeah. That's, wow. Good memories. <clears throat> wow. But yeah, there were a lot. I did notice there were a lot of uh, females versus males. Hey, it's- so uh, those, They like were I, right. They were right. Yeah, it's uh what did I say earlier? A target rich environment. That's right. That's what my military it's, friends would call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds like yeah, I remember Dr. Phil said that. That right. did sound kind of military, like you, yeah, you, I got like a you're buddy hunting. Like, yeah, like buddy hunting did like women. eight tours in Afghanistan. He yeah. taught me that one. So that's a good yeah. one. So oh, here's a here's a uh an endorsement for you. Dune is fantastic. Boom Studios is doing a graphic novel version of Dune House of Treaties, and it's so good. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. I was not aware of that. So treaties. Let's see. I can't believe yeah. Dale's seen the new Batman five times. Sarcastic remark there. And uh, oh, let's see. Did you see the new Suicide Squad? Suicide, suicide Squad. Movie? <laughs> suicide Squad. Yeah. No, I've never. No, uh -huh. I, that's another one I haven't seen. It says your name is in the end credits. Ah. Did you? I got a that? little shout. I got a shout out on Endgame. You know, oh, at the, right. when the credits are coming, they got like a hundred artists in a box. Special right, right. thanks to, right. and I'm in there somewhere. It's like John Byrne. Dale Keogh and a bunch of nice. other guys. So I, 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 yeah, that's kind of cool. I, I didn't get any money, but all right. Uh, but special thanks is is okay, I guess. Yeah, Dale was a player. Uh, mm. Yeah, he was. Uh, is it bass or is it uh, regular guitar? It was bass. Okay, you play bass. Yeah. Somehow I, you seem like a bass guitar guy to me. You yeah, know? I don't know why I gravitated. It's because everybody else wants to be the guitar player. Sure. And I'm like, I'm a nice guy, so okay, I'll play the bass. But I love it. <laughs> I love it. You know. Well, I love guitar too, but sure. You know, if I, I'm sure. sure if I had a drum set, I'd play drums too. Sure. Oh, this is a beautiful comment here, Dale. Two of yeah. my favorite people in this biz. You guys are genuine as shit. Love your work. Love your attitudes on life. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Friggle D. I will let the Larry Bird icon go. As a, uh, I'm a Laker fan once LeBron leaves. I don't like that yeah. communist sympathizer LeBron. I will mm -hmm. rejoin my Lakers when he leaves. Yeah. So I don't like the Celtics because that's our arch enemy. Um, I did do, I did some art. I did, I drew a picture of LeBron James. Yeah. Uh, remember, remember when the uh, fantastic, uh, the, or oh, sorry, uh, Dr. Strange movie came out. Yes. They did an NB, NBA uh, crossover. Right, 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 right. Right. So all these artists did sort of likenesses of all these uh, basketball players. I did LeBron James and I made him look kind of like, I guess I made him look too handsome. Like, you know how when you, you draw people like Luke Cage, I would draw him a certain way, but I'd try to make him handsome. Right. Not to say that LeBron James isn't handsome, but when you try to draw catch or capture a likeness, that's real tricky. Yeah, it sure is. It so sure I sent is. I sent in the cover. Yeah, there it is. But that's not my face. I didn't draw that face. I was gonna say that doesn't somebody else. Sense. Yeah, they had somebody in the bullpen draw the face and then put it on my body. Do you have it with you? The board? Can you show us the real? I'd I will I will pull that out for Kings or something. Okay. But, uh, okay. Yeah, you can see that the next two short. I mean, yeah. before it was like more of a handsome face. I had a so, the, <laughs> but they didn't even ask me to revise it. I love that the basketball is getting deformed. Yeah, I that's me. That. I did that. Yeah. Yeah, man. When you talk about your influence as a kid of Hulk and Tarzan and Nova, I yeah. I just those the word that rings in my head for all those kind of characters and books is dynamic. And I think that's one thing. I mean, you're rendering itself. The quality of line that you do is so gorgeous, but then you're able to turn those silky lines of yours into just dynamicism constantly, man. Yeah, that's I mean, all like, that's mostly line direction. Right. And concentrating, like, it's funny, you know, and Mark Brooks said that, that my artwork had no focus. Like, that's literally <laughs> the only thing I'm thinking about when I'm drawing. Poor, poor Mark Brooks. It's focus. Right. And hocus and pocus and all I that mean, stuff. I don't want to get too twittery and angry, but uh, Mark Brooks couldn't carry your jock. Are you kidding well, me? Well, let's face it. He used me to get the Ethan. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. He doesn't put a squirt of piss in Yeah, exactly. He doesn't give a shit about me. He compared used me. Yeah. I'm, I feel so used. Yeah. He couldn't even uh, just like come at you to hurt you. Yeah. To hurt Ethan. No, he, and oh. he actually kind of said, oh, he actually said, oh, I kind of like your work. Uh, yeah. In one in one of his messages, like he was like saying, "I didn't. I, I just wanted. I was trying to get the Ethan. I wasn't, you know. <laughs> like he might as well have said that. You should have just gave him like, yeah, who's this? You know, like Mark who? Yeah. Well, like, literally, I didn't know who he was until like a, probably a few months ago. Literally, yeah. like I don't keep up on that stuff. Who's no, the, you, the who's the big cover artist and who's doing this and that? No, your your wisdom shows. You know, I think some people think, oh, Dale, you know, he's a rock and roll guy and he likes his little bit of weed. Hmm. And, 
Now, Dale's a smart guy. I'm picking up on that. I don't know you, and I'm meeting you for the first time today, really. Yeah. And I'm like, you got some wisdom here. And chiefly, for what we do, mm -hmm. you stay the hell out of the Twitter fights, which is so Yeah, wise. I'm not so, even on Twitter. Right. And I that, remember I, I was tried to go on Twitter once, and there was this guy, like, using my name. He was like some, <laughs> some, he was like some Somalian guy. And I just went, oh, I don't want to do this. It kind of turned me off. Because I'd have to put the real Dale Keown, or <laughs> Dale Keown art, or something ridiculous. Oh, but funny. I'm not saying I won't go on Twitter. But <sighs> it just every time I go there, I go, oh, I don't want to sign in, man. I always tell people it's like looking in an airport toilet. So, <laughs> oh, oh, we've all. <laughs> when I was a little that. kid, the reason I say that is I went to the airport when I was like in third grade. Yeah. I opened the bathroom stall and I saw something I'll never forget. And even though I was only eight years old, I thought. Someone must have been really upset or really nervous to do this. <laughs> and I uh, never forgot it. It was yeah, uh, it's traveler's diarrhea. It happens. Uh, yeah, I love yeah. flying, but oh, I love I love to hear a good like. Once I was sitting outside, you know how the bathrooms in a uh, airport, there's no doors. It's kind of this. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. You like it's like this in. this yeah. ear canal of a of a of a thing, you know. <laughs> and then so I was sitting right in front, and this guy was having explosive diarrhea oh, right in front God. of me. And I'm going, I'm like holding back, laughing, I'm laughing. There's two people sitting on either side of me. Didn't even like, I'm going, come on, this is funny. This is funny. And I laughed and the guy came out and I was like, oh my God, I had to look oh. at him. And he's like, he just yeah. had like, he had to get it out of him. Yeah. You tried, but to it was so speaking. loud, man. It was oh. so loud. He sounded like he was dying in there. <laughs> it was horrible. It was Poor so guy. funny though. It was so funny. Oh. I love the sounds like that. <laughs> Let me, let me, let me, uh, still airplane related, but less poop related. Yeah. Let me ask you, you're a tall guy like me mm -hmm. and I love airplanes. Cause I started going on when I was a little kid, but now I'm too tall. Leg you know room. what I mean? I'm six foot four and uh, I'm not big and fat. I fit in the seat. Yeah. yeah. My knees are touching. Me, the me too. And that people always go back. <laughs> oh, and, and I don't crush, want to pay like for literally poop. crushing your knees. Right. Yeah. Right. You have to sit right up in the seat the whole time. Right. You see people like lounging. You're going, Oh, my God. right. I always try and sit in the aisle so I can stick my legs in there a little bit. I'll so, do that. Uh, but then yeah, the stewards, they're so rude now. The stewardesses. Oh, stuff, they're bad. You know? They're so bad, yeah. dude. I was on I was on a plane once and uh, I, I couldn't hear what the, the, the uh, pilot was saying. Like it's like. <laughs> and then so everybody's getting off the plane and everybody was off. And I said, so does this plane go to this place? And she goes, well, did he say it was? I was like, <laughs> oh. oh, I just looked at her. And I was like. Oh, I'm not going to say anything. I'll end up on some list. Right. So I just walked away. I get it. You can't even be rude back because you'll end up on a list. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? And she, but the, the only know. thing is she looked like, she looked like Getty Lee. So she's like, oof, oof. <laughs> yeah. oof. Well, what? that's it. You used to have really good looking flight right. attendants. Remember? Right. You know, yep. like, uh, yep. uh, was it, what was that? Oh, they used to have commercials fly with us. And the right. girls were all like Pan mini Am. skirts. Yeah. Pan Am. That exactly. was one of the selling points. Yeah. The mini skirts. Come fly yeah. with us. And they're all like alluring and sexy. Yeah. 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 I remember. Uh, and now that after 9 11, they know they yeah. can throw you off easily. Yeah. Like, yeah you're just at your your best behavior. Like, oh, uh, sorry, I was on a well, try, try being Jabril Abdullati Atib. Try having <laughs> yeah. that name and this <laughs> face. That me is and, a good me point. And my kids and my wife, oh. we get randomly selected. Wow. You randomly, quote unquote. Bit. Yeah. I get randomly selected. Very <laughs> randomly, yeah. guys. Please step and, this uh, way, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I, but I was on a Southwest flight last time I flew, and the guy said, "Would you like a drink, sir?" And I said, "Yes." What do you have? He saw it's on the menu. I'm like, whoa! You don't have to slap me, jeez. Damn. But, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, they're sometimes they're nasty. It's like a power trip or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or maybe they just they're nasty. They say maybe they they've been told to be nasty so nobody kicks up a fuss. I guess. But they do. People kick up fusses all the time. You see those videos of people freaking yeah. out. But I love flying, even though I'm too tall for the seats. I do love it. Yeah. Which, well, since I was a little kid, I love Star Wars since yeah. I was three years old. So yeah. I fantasize about being in X Wings all the time and TIE Fighters. So we started flying when I was about that age, too, because mm -hmm. we had relatives in Hawaii. And I would just look out the window and I couldn't yeah. believe it. I yeah. Would look at the earth out the window. And I just yeah. couldn't. I was so, I loved it so much. Yeah, I was an adult before I flew, and it, I had that same reaction as an yeah, adult. It's, it's, and I still, I marvel at airplanes. Yeah, oh, and I, I'll just see them in the sky. Hey, I'm like, how yeah. did anyone think that yeah. would work? Like you're sitting in a seat <laughs> in the sky, right? You know, and now we got Wi-Fi. Oh my I mean, goodness, crazy, right? Uh, I, remember, I remember when you could smoke on planes. 
Oh just my like, gosh! Just that smoke. This like a, this tube of smoke. Right. Right. I didn't yeah. even care. I didn't care. Yeah, man. Flying was it was better in the old days, you know. Yeah. But uh, I guess yeah. Uh, once I now. become a joiner, I'll have to start flying first class so my knees fit. Yeah, you I know? have like anxiety attacks when I have to fly now. Just because of what? Just because of going through security, you got to take your belt off and your shoes. And oh, it's just the like, rigmarole. And I don't know. And it's like they expect you to know what to do. Oh. Take your take your belt off. I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> take your shoes off. I, what? No. Yeah. You oh. know, it's just like, so rude about it. You stand but, in there. You know, <laughs> once I'm once I'm through security, I love it. Yeah, yeah. The security yeah. is not a very dignified experience. Oh. You know, like yeah. take your shoes off, take your belt off. You're standing there. Yeah. Then you then you have this face. You know, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. sir, can you open your bag? They had me open my <laughs> laptop. Yeah, they're looking at pictures of. They, they, they literally her. had me pry the laptop open, like it was booby yeah. trapped or something. No kidding. Like, yeah. Well, you know. Wow. El, El Taib, come yeah, on. Exactly. Name, so. Yeah, exactly. you. Yeah, they didn't want to admit yeah. it, but yeah, sure. <laughs> oh man, I, I never thought of that, dude. I never. Thought I don't of get that. offended because I'm just like, what am I gonna do? That's this how it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just know? you gotta you got you gotta you gotta pick your battles. Right. Don't don't so. sweat the small stuff, and it's pretty right. much all it's small. It's not stuff. worth it. And yeah. uh, I had a recent thought the last few times I've been flying. I love it so yeah. much. I love looking out the window. And mm. then I thought, my God, if I was afraid of flying, this would be the scariest thing in the universe. Yeah. To look out that window and see these little buildings and these. Yeah, or a, or a creature on the wing. I feel sorry for people that are afraid of yeah. flying. That's got to be terrifying. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I would unreason- hate. Sorry. Let me ask you this about fears. I had an unreasonable fear my whole life of mm. roller coasters. Don't know mm. why. Because I'm not afraid of airplanes, but I would never go on an upside down roller coaster. And yeah, last never. year I was at Disney California Adventure, and they have the California, the Incredibles movie coaster. Oh yeah, and it has a yeah. big loop. Yeah, and I said I can't do this. I cannot be afraid of this shit. So I just went on it, and it was so much fun. And I like love it now. And I'll go on any roller coaster now. It just took one ride. And when I got off it for the first time, I was so pumped and excited. Still don't know why I was afraid of them my whole life. And there was a little boy, and his brother got off. His older brother. Mm. And the little boy was like, <clears throat> me. Mm-hmm. And he said, was it fun or was it scary? He didn't go because he was too scared, this little boy. And I uh-huh. turned to him and said, listen, son, I'm going to save you a lot of time here. I wasted 40 years of my life not going on these things. Go on it. It's not scary. <laughs> You're not going to yeah. die. I wish someone had told me this when I was a little kid. But uh, are you a roller coaster guy or not? Well, I was going to say, I don't think, I don't even know if I've been on a roller coaster. I've certainly never been on an upside down one because that freaks me out. I okay. mean, I realize it's like centrifugal force and you're not going to fall out. But, you know, you see those videos of uh, amusement park rides going horribly wrong. Right. You know, like right. a whole Ferris wheel, like falling off. Uh, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Sometimes they don't maintain those things. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, that's a lot of work and parts. Yeah, if it's the parts. traveling fair. Yeah, you know, we, we had that. We had around. that. I remember once in a year, the, the, the fair would come to town. It'd be a parade. Just this little area with these re- like awful rides, and all uh, the cotton candy, a lot of cotton, and uh, <laughs> like uh, like uh, candied apples. Remember those things? Like right. What are they called? Yeah. Yeah. Pull all your yeah. teeth out with those. Yeah, things. exactly. But a lot of Jeez. cotton candy, just one hundred percent sugar. You're bouncing around the place for like a year. <laughs> your pancreas Crazy. is screaming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, no Thank more. God. Yeah. Please, no more. Um. Oh, uh, I wanted to mention this again. Mass debater. Yay, by the way, YouTube voided yourself for some reason. Yes, when you live stream, the algorithm is programmed to literally unsub some of you without your permission. Everyone, all 112 people watching right now, double hit check the subscribe button because yeah. I've been live streaming so much, promoting books, other people's, my own. They've taken like 50 subs from me in three weeks. So yeah. everyone, please, right now, click the subscribe button. And if you're subscribed, double check to make sure because <clears throat> they're sneaky. They hate live streams. They want me to just make videos and upload them so they can run commercials. So I need you all to please help me out here because I always want to live stream for you guys. I love interacting with you guys. I love bringing on great guys, Chuck Dixon, Dale Kill, and all these great guys. You get to see their art, talk to them, learn yeah. about their lives. But I got to have you stay sub so I can bring them on. So please sub right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, buddy. Mm. <clears throat> so so um, are we uh, are we running out of steam here? I mean, I'm having fun, but I don't know how long I can keep you because I know you. I'm sure you have things you got to do, or you got to go to bed eventually, or what's up with you? Yeah, I probably. Uh, I don't know. I'll either go to bed or I'll stay up for another twelve hours. Okay. You never know. <laughs> You're at that but, fork of the road. But I, yeah, I did. I have been having a little bit of drink, but okay. But last night I got, I got a like 
dark drunk. Oh, no. Yeah, because I, they had this show. Shane had this show. Mandy was on there, John. And I just sort of popped on there spontaneously. Uh -huh. And I was drinking. So by the time I should have been starting work, I was like, I'm, ba I'm uh, back in my chair like this. Just on <laughs> logs. Feel but I slept, I slept it off, though. I slept it off. Okay. Good. I'm starting to handle my liquor better. Okay. Than I could. Okay. So I'm in good shape. Uh, all right. Uh, um, Let's see. Oh, here's a good question. Does Dale have a YouTube channel? Yeah, but there's like hardly anything on it. Like I remember uh, I created the YouTube channel back in like 2007, probably, and I was doing musical stuff. Okay. So there's a couple, there's like three bass playing videos, a couple guitar, just nothing. I, I haven't really done anything with it. It's called 44 Numbskull. Okay, forty-four numbskull. Yeah, that's. Oh, me. was that you in the chat? Earlier? Yeah, that's me. Oh, someone said that's not Dale. Okay. I know. I like, oh. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that's why I asked. That's why I asked you to wrench me. Oh, that's make hilarious. More, make it more um, official. Yeah, I now could, uh, more people know now. A lot of people know. Okay, but I that's go... the name I chose. Like when I I came onto uh, YouTube, I was like, it's like forty-four numbskull. It's back in when I was forty-four years old. Okay, let me hold, hold on. You're hearing an echo because my uh, I turned on YouTube because I want to wrench you, but I have to open the oh. YouTube window on my computer. <clears throat> I have to open this episode that we're on live so I can get. To well, the yeah. Chat. Now I'm now I'm subscribed. I watch all your stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah, I do live streams. We talk art, yep. and I have okay. a recurring guest, Chuck Dixon. I want ah, to add you to that. Chuck you are, Dixon. You are yeah, delighted. yeah. You know, You're I worked with uh, another old school writer. I worked with Steve Gerber. Oh, wow. He actually how wrote, was, like, a couple that? of issues. Of, oh, that was great. He phoned me all the time. Really nice guy. He would talk about his pit bulls. Oh. Yeah, yeah, like pit bulls and stuff. He was, like, a real proponent of pit bulls. Yeah, but that was, after, that, was, that was weird because he ended up writing pit. So. Um, but but write... that's what pit is. That's what pit is, like a humanoid pit bull. I didn't even think of that. Can you yeah. write something in the chat right now so when I see your name pop up, I can wrench you, Dale? That's that's the best way well, for me to wrench you is if you write. I will. I will go to the other browser, browser, and open you up. Okay. And then I'll turn the volume down because it's gonna be weird for. Some right, time. right, right. It's okay if we okay. get that. Oh, oh, there we go. There we okay. go. Okay. So yeah, just oh, write shit. something. In the chat. Oh, sorry. Getting an echo. Okay, here we go. I'll just put hail. Hail. When I see hail, I'll wrench you the moment I see it. Okay. It so, takes. It's a delay. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So I will wrench you. Uh, add moderator. Forty four numbskull is now a moderator for your channel. Do you have an origin story on the name Forty Four Numbskull? No, I just I just think it's a funny name. I mean, I'm kind of a numbskull, so <laughs> it fits. It suits me. Uh, I'm not so much when I was forty. Okay, let me put it this way: when I was forty four, I was more of a numbskull. Okay. okay. Now I'm not not quite a numbskull. Okay. But I do well, like. Oh, here we go. Here I am. Is there? Oh, anything? look at that! Let's see. Oh, yeah, look, we... guys! Look at I'm getting a bunch of responses. Uh, Hail numbskull! Some guy say come to Boston sometime. Look oh, Angela that. Curry! Yeah, she's everywhere. Angela, she's a great fan. Past Master Dance wants a pit waifu pillow. Do you know what waifu pillows are? Wi-Fi pillow? No, waifu. No, it's, uh, you know Japanese cartoons and comic books. Like, think of like an overly sexy like anime character. Oh, and yeah. you put it on like a five foot pillow, and then you sleep with this thing and hold it. Mm, I would do that. <laughs> I have a, I have a, I have a body pillow. Yeah, it's a body pull... pillow, but it has a sexy anime girl on it. I want to get so, one. So we need one with pit on it, is what he's saying. Yeah, link me, hook me up. <laughs> I want, I don't want an anime pillow. Uh, well, okay, so we'll we'll let you cut you loose in just a second. Couple things first. Mm. Um. What do you want to promote? Where? What are you working on? What are people going to see soon? I know we had Gem Shock. We well, there that. obviously there's the werewolf cover that we all know about, right? Um, of course, Gem Shock. Um, I'm working on something for Patrick that is the next thing on my finish list. Nothing for John Malin though. Well, you know, I was gonna, <laughs> you know, he's just not showing me the love yet. Oh, that's so like funny. I sent him my Am Amazon gift list and nothing. It'll yeah, it's it's hilarious to keep. So telling yeah, he's got to butter me up. We'll oh, we'll that's see. Funny. Let's see if so, he plays oh, his cards right. He'll get a cover. Right. He has to romance you. He's got to play. He's got a. You know. You know, know there's shown. there's certain rules and regulations to this. He's he not easy, that. ladies and gentlemen. You got to romance him. How do you think I got him on here? 
You know, that's right. So yep. I will be actually doing the real colors of this eventually. These are just some gummied in color rough for me and Dale to make notes. If you but you know what, that, Gabe? You know uh, what, Gabe? That right there, a lot of colors would just settle for that. Right. Honestly. Right. But yeah. you're gonna put like you're gonna get the 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 wrinkle, the highlights on the wrinkle oh, yeah. on the nose. You're gonna get the nose that looks a little bit like shiny because it's kind of wet. You're, you know, and you know what I wanted to do, but with this, I would do a version of this. I'm gonna open Photoshop. I can't remember what this tool is called, but a, a lot of times, yeah, I put the, I didn't really, I put the nose. You see, I put the uh, the dark colored nose. Yeah. You don't you don't have to respond to that. You can just do it however you want. It doesn't have to be a different color nose. It okay. might be too much. I just put it in there because I thought, you know, you could either use it or not. More, more for selection purposes, you know. Sure. But um, there's this one tool where I would go, like, if I was doing that, I would stain his teeth red, kind of. Oh, and sure. Yeah. Like, you could do a version of that and not do a version of that. Yeah, we can oh, check that out for okay. sure. Why yeah, I'll, I'll send a couple things your way. Aaron's yeah, way, I'll, but... I'll show you what yeah. I mean later. Yeah. Okay. But my and Photoshop. We, so, back Wraith of God, guys. Check that out. I want you to also back my book. We are uh, at 801 backers. Thank you, guys. Oh, we passed 51,000. Thank you so much. And then we want to back, uh, let me write Gem Shock into here. Okay. Yeah, we'll get you out of here in just a second, Dale. Uh, uh, no, I'm good, man. I don't okay. feel tired. Okay. And uh, no. yeah, I'll stay as long as you want. Uh, and yeah. then we want, look at this cover by Dale here, if you guys haven't seen it. Come on, load already. So we want to back Gem Shock. We are at 29,677. Let's get that to 30, guys. Let's and, go, uh, people. Gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> cover here. By, yeah, uh, daylight's burning. Yeah, 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 yeah. So absolutely. And then, uh, oh, you know what? I yeah. I have an uh, art contest from my book, Son of Art Contest. Uh, Dale, would you mind if I showed two videos hmm. that are each under a minute? Would you mind? No, I go for it. Okay, let me bring those up right quick. First one is, the, I think you saw these when we started the show, but let me bring it up again now that more people are here. Truth, Justice, American Way fans, it's time for Son of Art Contest. Last month, we had an amazing art contest with beautiful entries from people all over Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So we're telling you now, get your entry in. Draw your favorite Truth, Justice, American Way art. Tag me, at Gabe Tabe on Instagram. Tune in Thursday, the 21st of April, 4 p.m. Pacific, and we're going to be giving out prizes of first, second, and third place. See you there. As I said earlier, kids' seats are just a bug. Yeah, be there. <laughs> monster I love those, like uh, monster oh. truck. I've never been to a monster truck rally, but I bet they're yeah. amazing. With so the please enter the art contest. I've already got some art sent to me yesterday, and uh, it's really fun to see the fans like really, you know, yeah. show off and express themselves. That's really fun. I have one other video. It's like forty-five seconds. Thank you for Go indulging, Dale. I really appreciate Ooh. this. Oh, I love this shit. And uh, <laughs> yeah. And tell me, uh, tell me honestly, because I asked you earlier, and uh, you said this does remind you of being an image thirty years ago. This independent, yeah. yeah, yeah. But the thing is that I actually get more love for way more love from CG than I ever did from image. Wow. Well, here we really? go. Really, I mean, I've made way more friends in CG over the last year than I've I have made in the last like twenty years. Wow. Like wow. people who, you know, like good, funny people like John and Shane and you and well, yeah. obviously Ethan. I think you made Mandy. a new friend today. I'm your first yeah. Libyan Mexican friend. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to meet you. Uh, so hold on. Just don't go flying with me because you're going to have to wait extra as we wait for me to go through security. So uh, Well, they got good snacks. <laughs> Let me play this I one. Got a lot of, I got a lot of patience. Right. Uh, here we go with this one here. In a world. What if the fake news canceled the world's most beloved heroes? When a tragic attack ends the lives of precious innocents, our most celebrated heroes find themselves blamed and canceled by the media that once glorified them. Now in hiding, will they be able to trust each other long enough to prove their innocence? Will they better fight as hard as they can? Because if they don't, an even bigger tragedy is coming. And Kill this it. time, it will cost millions of lives. Truth, Justice, American Way, the 64-page full-color graphic novel. Get yours today, only on Indiegogo. I got to say, okay. I agree with you, Dale, about the experience being in CG. Yeah. Um, 
I, you you could attest to this. DC and Marvel and all that, they keep you at arm's length from the fans. They don't want you promoting the books too much. They mm -hmm. just, you know what I mean? They like, just draw it, dummy, is how they kind of treated us. At least that was my experience sometimes. Right, yeah, okay. Being, being able to just bring bring comments onto the screen like this and chat with people. They DM me on Twitter. They DM me on Instagram. It's yeah. like going to Comic-Con every day. And, you're, mm. and I've made great friends in CG too. And I've, I've made a friend today with you Dave. yes so <laughs> so um but do you uh, do you did marvel and dc do they hey don't talk to the fans too much we'll handle it did they treat you that way too no they never did um i didn't you know i'm back with marvel i didn't really do a lot of conventions okay. so i never experienced that i mean i told you about the uh, hulk homecoming tour that was like a series of comic book shops not like uh -oh. a big convention and dude i was in dude oh I was in California, like I was in my 20s, like late, like 27, 28. And I go to Los Angeles, right? I fly easy, got in easy. You know, my, my criminal record didn't matter back then. I can't remember who was president, but for some reason I got across really easy. Criminal so I show up. I, yeah, I, I have a criminal record. But uh, um, it's, it's a long, stupid story. But anyway, um, but sometimes I get stopped and then I, they turn me back a couple of times. That was embarrassing. But anyway, I meet up with Peter David. We do this whole convention. I went to Bill Moomy's house. I met Fidel for uh, Miguel Ferrer. Had a wow. good time. The next day, because our flights were so early, I wasn't getting any sleep, and I woke up with this giant fever blister on my face. Ooh. Like it was just pulsating. It was like it had like it talked to me. It was like another person. Oh. And it was like, and I, I go, oh God, it's just this oozing pustule on my face. And I was in like the city of beautiful people. Oh, you know, boy. and I, dude, I had to do a convention with that thing on my face. Like it was oh. really big. And I'm like, I'm holding, keep my head down and stuff. Nobody gives you face. Nobody gives you like he got socked. I, 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 yeah, I thought of that. Uh, but if you do that, it spreads more. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, you can't do that. You got to put the right stuff on it or whatever. Oh. So I'm, I just remember flying back. I'm lying back on my seat, just, oh, and people are like, I think people felt sorry for me, but I was just like, slept the whole way back to toronto oh, from los angeles that, but it was that. like just because the guy who was booking the flights had us let's say if we had a four o'clock signing uh-huh he had us flying out at five o'clock in the morning and getting there at like you know from like uh, los angeles to uh, san francisco you get there an hour whatever yeah. and then you sit around instead of just flying us in and letting us sleep Yee. It was terrible routing i remember yeah. peter david was really pissed off about that right at routing yeah that sounds yeah. that does sound that was bad planning yeah you got to think about yeah. that stuff yeah oh my gosh that's but that's so that's that's i did that convention i've done uh detroit i did detroit once with mark silvestri i did of course uh sam uh san diego a few times like sure was it twice or once yeah once at least oh i i don't miss any i mean i live you know this was back when it was just comic books there was no right. movies there, you know so before so, the line of demarcation to me is spider-man 2 that's right when it just, that, that summer or yeah. the summer after that's yeah. when san diego changed for yeah, those they kept... don't know San Diego Comic Con, greatest convention in the world. You could drive up the day of the con, drive under the building, and there's underground parking. Mm -hmm. Find a parking spot and buy a ticket and go inside that day. Yeah, yeah. Now you, now you and buy find a hotel tickets. room. Yeah, now you buy all that stuff like in December and it yeah. sells out in five minutes. So yeah. um, it's insane. Uh, I wanted they... to address this just for you. Uh, Dale, right. your art absolutely rocked on Hulk. And then Pitt was my favorite image book. When you came to CG, I was overjoyed. Glad you're here, brother. Mutt Man is a great fan. Uh, a thank you, Mutt. Thanks a lot, man. I'm glad yeah. to be here. For and sure. And then I don't know if you can touch this one because it might be controversial. Any run-ins with Todd Father? Like, has he ever offered you anything? What do you think of him? You don't have to answer that if, if it's weird. No, I, the last time I – he was going to do a uh, Pitt toy at one point. Ooh, that was a lot. That was years ago before I got this Hasbro deal. Right. Because I think he was only going to, it was like a percentage thing that I, it was too low. So I, I sort of said, no, Okay. I did. I did say no. I didn't sort of say no. <laughs> <laughs> I said no. And, said, uh, do and, then, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Hasbro thing happened. Okay. Right? So I got a hat, dude, this was the one of a sweet deal for me, man. I got the Hasbro deal. They're going to do a pit toy. And usually it was sort of like they're working with with DreamWorks, and in the entertainment industry, they they get the the toy deal done first. That's all settled, Hasbro. Okay. And then they then you start negotiating. We, I didn't even know what kind of thing they were going to do, but I was already signing a toy deal. They gave me like a half a million dollar upfront. 
Wow. And I'm like, what does that mean? It means if this if this deal falls through, you never have to pay that money back. I get no a quarter million. Sorry, um, not a half million, <laughs> a quarter million, still a lot, you know. Hey. So basically, uh, ultimately, the deal fell through, and I got to keep the. Like it was such a sweet deal. I didn't do anything wrong with that. I just got a quarter mil in my account. I'm like, I didn't have to do anything. I was kind of disappointed they didn't actually make the toy, the action wow. figure. But that was the power. That was because Pitt was considered a marquee property at the time. And okay. that was the power of how much potential that had at the time. And I never wanted to do a movie because I didn't think the CGI was ready yet. And I think I'm right. I think it's ready now. Yeah, I think like, so. I think. Yeah. But if back was, then, there's uh, no way it was close to being ready. Right. No, I think you got to. I think you got to debut your CG property, whether it's Pit or something else. Mm. And then I'm sure you own Pit. I hope you do. Pit omnibuses through CG and Indiegogo. Mm. That's yeah. just printing money. I was telling Gary Martin last night the Gary Martin, yeah. the uh, the art of inking. You mm -hmm. know that amazing book. He owns that. I asked him last night. I said, "Dude, that's got to be an Indiegogo." So I'm going to help him with that. I emailed oh. him because he doesn't know Indiegogo oh. and all that. He's the anchor for Truth, Justice, American Way. Right, he, okay. You know, he doesn't know or do social media as much. But I told him, dude, if you own that, there's no overhead almost. You just have right. to print and ship it. It's already made. And people love that book. It's out of print. So uh, yeah, why if not? you own Pitt, dude, no um, come on, Pitt Omnibus. That's free money for you. And if yeah, you I just have to get off my ass. You need, uh, hold on, let me go full screen. If if you need some of it recolored, I know a guy. Mm. I know okay. a guy. Okay, good to know. Yeah, handsome I'm gonna, Arab guy that I know. So I'm gonna look at what I got. I got zip. <laughs> I got zip discs. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. don't know if, that, if they even if there's like a life uh, lifespan on those zip discs. I'm sure they'll still work. Yeah. But I, a lot of the pages are in zip discs, and uh, you know stuff like that. I don't know what I got though. Yeah. But it's just a matter of going down into my basement and finding them. Yeah. Which is pretty scary. I, I'm telling you from the outside looking in, because I'm not yeah. you, obviously. Yeah. Um, dude, people obviously love your work. And Pit Omnibus, uh, that's about the 10th time Admiral Wackass has said that. And, yeah. Uh, and then a Pit yeah, it's toy. Like a, Look yeah. how Ethan did all his Cyberfog toys and they were hit. Mm -hmm. You could do Pit action figures and all that. Or whatever oh, characters. Yeah. I don't know if you're still into Pit or you got well, new I, ideas. or. It was, I got this one done by Toy Biz. Holy. Hold on. Hold on. Make me big. That Jeez, is you amazing. can move it. It's got look at the articulation on that hand. You got is that power. recent or is this 20 no, years? No, this ago? is uh 2009. Wow, no, no, 2008, something like that. So but the, yeah, so the whole thing went bust, and then they uh, this is Toy Biz, and the, so the, instead of paying me the extra money, they just sent me a bunch of toys. So, okay, yeah. now imagine yeah. premium, gorgeous figures like that, but you own it all, right? But this one had this one has two left feet. I don't know why. <laughs> Somebody messed this up. Is the pit not dance version, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah disco uh, pit. So, oh man, this is fantastic. This is I love it. So uh let's see. Thank I'm you. just checking the, the chat here for what else anyone is saying. Um I know. Oh, here it is. I think this sums up a lot of it. One of the, One best. Of the best things about commentate is doing what you want to do. So yeah, do what you want to do. Yeah. In right. living color, I love that show. I was a middle. Yeah, I love it. Not, yeah, my favorite character was the the Jim Carrey. Was well, he's he was on that show, right? Right. Jim, was it fire marshal? He did, fire, yes. Yeah. Where he just stuck his lip up. Right. <laughs> do you oh, realize? Do you realize how dry you have to get your gums to do that? It's right. Crazy. I've right. tried it. You really yeah. got to just wipe the every little. And bit you of can't lip. have big lips like me. It does, there's I can't tuck mm. them in. Yeah. Good point. Oh, Tarks9 says he has that figure. Wow. Mm. And uh, Danky Frankie awesome. says that's a cool toy. Dung Ringhill says two left feet still looks awesome. I does, uh, though. I, it looks so awesome I didn't notice until yeah. <laughs> I took a closer look. Uh, every woman's dream is to be in Dale Known's basement. I don't know about that, but hey, man, whatever. <laughs> well. You got a nice basement? I don't want I don't know. I can't say anything. Okay, let's never mind. <laughs> let's talk about Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> oh, yeah, talk on that. Ah, yeah, that was great. For you youngins out there, there was a urban Saturday Night Live called uh, yeah. In Living in Colors Living on Color. Sunday nights. I think it was on, was it on like Fox or the WB? Or? It was Fox. You're right. It was, it was Fox. Fox. Or what was uh, Mad TV? Was that oh, Fox shit, that 2? Was Fox 2. 
Yeah, oh. so they had two comedy shows in SNL. Yeah, Matt course. TV was like five or ten years later, but but dude, in the I used early to watch. Did you ever watch? 90s. Yeah, SCTV. We had. I think that got down in right. The that's where. Yeah, uh, I used to watch John, a lot of the great John Candy. Yeah, John Candy, and then yep. every and those people that were in. Uh, What's the best in show? That fake documentary about yeah. dog people. Have you seen yeah. Best in Show? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh That's my gosh. Name, uh, uh, what's his name? Christopher Guest, who did the Spinal Tap. Right, and then Eugene Levy, the father from American Pie. Mm -hmm. and he knows, and he and yeah. that lady with the squinty eyes. I forget her name, but she's really funny too. And uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Martin. Uh, no, um, uh, oh, why can't I remember? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. It has an M. You're right. It's an yes. M. I don't remember the rest. Yes. Of my name. Somebody, chat, chat. Yeah, best in show. I don't know her and, name because but... Andrea Martin was the other girl, I think. Right. And then there was the uh, who she was on uh, a six feet under for a while. <laughs> I love this <laughs> comment. John Candy could have been bit in a live action movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's an easy target. Uh, John Candy was fantastic in one of my uh, favorite movies, The Blues Brothers. I thought Candy. you were going to say Trains, Planes, and Automobiles. That's a great one too. Oh, but... that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's not great. a pillow. Oh yeah, he's. <laughs> what are your hands? I've got them between two pillows. Goes, Those aren't pillows. <laughs> and when I, they're driving, when they're driving down the wrong side of the road, and the people right. are trying to warn him, yeah. he's going, "Yes, yeah, okay." <laughs> and they go between the two trucks. Yeah. It's just sparks. Oh, I love amazing, that. Amazing, so amazing much. charisma on that guy. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Some people didn't get John Candy. I got him. I got him, loved him. Yeah. Uh, and here's the Blues Brothers. We're on a mission from God. I love the Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah, me too. I saw that so many times growing up. So, <laughs> yeah. absolutely love it. Well, so. there was, you know, back in the day, they had uh, they started the movie channel when I was like a young man. Uh huh. And there's so many movies I watched on the movie channel that I probably would never have watched. And there, and I remember them. I like them, but everybody else hates them. Mm. You know, like I remember seeing. I remember that really bad movie called. Uh, uh dr pepper's lonely hearts club band it had like a bunch of do people doing a bunch of bands doing like beatles songs uh-huh i used to watch i liked it it's just horrible <laughs> like i've seen so many like i actually one movie i liked was Starman. you ever Star see that hold yeah on, with jeff on, bridges it's a yes. good it's yeah. a good one yeah it's yeah. kind of low-key it's not like really science fictiony and it's effectsy no. I, but I it's mean, good I love, it's a good solid movie yeah no i love yeah. cheesy movies yeah it's good, you know. Yeah, I, I know. How I do Wednesday nights tonight with Shanth and Jetty called Double Impact, and it's all about '80s and '90s nonsense action with Jean Claude Van Damme and Steven Seagal, and all, yeah. I love that. So I feel you on like. Do you actually really watch? Do you watch clips, or you just talk about it? Uh, oh, we watch the whole movie and talk about it. But we've got oh, wow. like quality movies now. Tonight we're talking about one of the most beautiful movies ever, Groundhog Day. Mm, you know, yeah, remember. another one. That's on my list. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I rewatched it two weeks ago, and it's such a touching movie where he really learned yeah. that pursuing all that pleasure, pursuing all the money, the wealth, the sex, yeah, was hell. And the only mess. thing that broke the spell to take him out of hell was loving other people. What an amazing message in that movie. Yeah, it really you is. Know, and and, and the journey is so funny. You know, right? You yeah. learn you learn something, but you don't feel like they're being preached to. Right? They put some sugar so the medicine yeah. will yeah. go down. You know, hundred percent, absolutely. So absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we're simpatico on a lot of things here. Man. Yeah, I, I think so. My damnedest to make your cover just a freaking home run. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah, I I uh, I have a lot of confidence that's going to happen. Okay, yeah, because I care. But uh, it's noon, <clears throat> and me and my lovely bride, we always go for a walk to get some exercise in every day. Uh, noon. Yeah, I so should do I, that. I cannot thank you enough for being here, Dale. I think oh, this was absolute. Oh, I love this so much. It was really fun. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. I definitely think we should do it again. Yeah. Um, I'll invite you back on and uh, yeah. we'll talk more. Uh, when I was a kid, loving Pitt and all that kind of stuff. And mm. okay. We more, yeah, more we'll work. do part part two. Well, uh, you can show the actual cover. Sure. Finish. I can show well, the cover. I think, okay. I don't know if Aaron, I don't know when he's going to show it. He'll probably show it pretty quick. Well, we already when he gets I mean, back. We've already shown the black and white, so it's, yeah. for me, it's fair game to show. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so, I agree. I guess. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, if we didn't show the black and white, then I wouldn't. I would ask Aaron for permission. But since we've already shown the image, I might as well just color it. Yeah, he might oh, be well. watching this right now. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Hi, Aaron. But uh, okay, so last thing. Hi, um, Shelly. Dale's working on. He's working on Gem Shock. He's working on something secretly for Patrick Parnell. He's doing this cover with me for Aaron LaPresse's Wraith of God. Back Truth, Justice, American Way, back Gem Shock, back Wraith of God. Um, I think all those things are in the description. I'm not sure. I, it was early this morning when I was making the show, guys. Mm, yeah. Thank you so much, Dale. We love you. You inspired me as a kid. 
And Thank I'm going to do my best to do a great job on your stuff. So yeah, well, your nice your coloring you. inspires me now. Wow, <laughs> I can, I'm going to clip that. I, I got to know when to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's you no, it's no, no. Fresh you get it. Like, you get it, man. You're a good colorist. I, you, you know what? I'll say this. I, I give a shit. I think that's yeah. Obvious. I give a shit about art. I, yeah, I really whatever. Get it. It's fun. Yeah. Money's great, but I want this to be good. You know. Yeah, I want to do. I want to do one thing well. You know, right. I'll say this. Thing. Hold on. Just I was leaving, but I'll say this. Right. If I had like 10 million, 100 million dollars in the bank, I don't even know that I would be worried about publishing my art. I would publish it as a lark or whatever. Mm. But I just want to make art. I love art as much as you can love something that isn't human. Yeah. I, love, I just love looking at it. I love making it. And uh, I just if I was super, super when I'm super wealthy like that, I don't yeah. know. Maybe I'll just do sculpture and painting at my house privately. Cause yeah, I, but yeah, I have to do it. All the you time. have to do it. Yeah. Right. I mean, I did it. I did it when I was a kid all the time. Like it's a natural yeah. thing, you know, did you make like, did you just make stuff if it didn't exist? Like if they didn't yeah. make a certain Ninja Turtle uh, action playset or a certain Star Wars character or vehicle, I would make it out of cardboard, out of clay, out of Legos. I would just make my own toys if they didn't exist. I did. I did play a lot with plasticine. Okay. You know, mod just modeling stuff. Okay. I, I used to like, I, it's kind of weird, but I would make these human figures. And then I'd wrap thread around them and go, Nyah! and then watch them fall apart. <laughs> I would I would torture these creatures. Uh, these I would take the green army men and light them on fire. Yeah, you have them. to do that eventually. You drag your GI Joe behind your bike. It's like, ah! <laughs> oh my gosh! I think that's a good place to end it. Uh, I do need to go get my exercise. Right. It was a delight right. having you on. I'll have you on again soon. The people seem to love Thank you here. You. Thank uh, you I'm very starting much. to love you. You're a good guy. And I Thank hope we you. can actually become friends here because this, is, this yeah. is great, dude. You seem like a solid dude. My turn. Thank, Thank you, you all Thank for watching. You. Subscribe to this channel because freaking YouTube unsubs people on lives. Make your subs make sure you're subscribed. Are we doing knuckles into the camera? Yeah. Oh. Bye, guys.